us go. And here we go. Ten, five, four, three. Call to me, call to me, lands far away. Elves have forests to protect. We need to build a wall. Dwarfs their mines. Mend their fields of grain. But we Harfoots have each other. For I must now wander this wandering day. We're safe. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. No, no. Put up your sword. The enemy is still out there. The question now is where? It is over. Nothing is over! Nothing! You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this sin, not join them! If you only knew the power of the dark side. Darkness will march over the face of the earth. It will be the end, not just of our people, but all peoples. Everyone! I am sorry, but their time has come. The past is with us all. The past is dead. We either move forward or we die with it. This could be the beginning of a new era. To him finally being lionized as in the prime and his prime. Fuck. Do it! Shit. Just do it! Don't let your dreams <clears throat> Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Luke went from being. Oh no. Welcome, Slayer Nation. I have some great news for you today. I hope you're all doing great. Nope, that didn't work. One more. You have failed me for the last time. Welcome, Slayer Nation. I hope you... If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. that is eating away at what you love in order for it to shine. And one man's vision is... Oh, Sometimes you don't have to make things better for them to be great again. You merely have to rule, rule. Okay. <laughs> Hollywood continues to slow boil the culture and crazy. Well, right now, Spider-Man actor Andrew Garfield has stepped up and he's fighting motherfucker. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. And an unbearded dwarves, but Prime didn't stop there. They stapled in intersectionality, individuality, but it could be, but it could take a bull. So it begins. At my signal, unleash hell.
ladies and gentlemen, George the Giant Slayer. What's going on, everybody? We're back, and we are live from the Lone Star State. So good to be here today. You know, I was thinking, you know, I love Hollywood. One thing about Hollywood, no matter how much garbage they pump out, no matter how much trash they pollute our society with, they've brought us all together. And this Wednesday, I've been promising it. You guessed it. We're holding our very first membership live stream at 2 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. UK time. So you can jump from the chat and join me on the panel. Ask whatever questions you want or get something off your chest. But we're going to have a good old-fashioned get-together. And before we get started, I want to highlight. Martino just gave us 20 Slayer memberships. He gifted them in the chat. So go grab them. Become a member so you can join us in the membership live stream. Now, what would you think that Walt Disney would say if he were alive today? I was thinking about it. And I was like, I swear he thought that he woke up in one of Goofy's nightmares. I mean, I mean, seriously, we all know it. Modern Hollywood movies today suck. They lose money, they piss off the fans, and they do the exact opposite of what great storytelling is supposed to do. Entertain and bring people together. Instead of making movies that unite, the Hollywood hive makes films that divide. I mean, hell, when I was growing up, if you had a feature film that flopped, the, for everybody from the actors to the directors to the producers would run away and hide in shame. They'd be embarrassed. But today you get one of these big films with a blockbuster budget the size of a third world small nation. And when it tanks, they go out onto the red carpet and throw a temper tantrum and read. They pull out their giant soapbox and demand that you celebrate and whip out the pom-poms with them. And when you tell these A-list actors or these D-list wannabes that, hey, the movie sucks. They're like, it doesn't matter. It has a political message. And that's the problem. See, the woke cult has their claws into our culture. So it's going to take a nation of slayers with honesty, courage, and conviction to clean house. So are you ready? Welcome, Slayer Nation. Today, we're going to do a deep dive again into the Disney D files. We're going to look at all the new wave of actor activists and the ones that came from social media where likes are currency and echo chambers of the law of the land. Then we're going to beep, bop, boop over to Gina Carano and see how her match is going to pin the mount house to the mat with her lawsuit. And then we might check out X-Men 97, the animated series that's coming out in March, and how Morph is doing with his non-binary life, or about Kristen Stewart and her Rolling Stone cover, or Bob Iger, who took the ball gag out of his mouth. But now we have our first panel, our first guest, he doesn't need any introduction. You know him as the guy that unmasked the Robin Hood television series. That's Robin with a Y. As the king of comedy television in 2023, he also kicked the leg, the one good leg from underneath the MCU's echo. This Peru. How you doing, mate? You do one hell of an introduction, I tell you that. <laughs> um, it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be on. I, I liked your, your, your intro with all the... Um... The, the mistakes in it. I, I've done that in a video before where I edited it incorrectly, and I've just left in like a 10 second repeat of me saying the same word. I'm like, oh no, I can't believe I left that in there. But I like the idea that you've made a whole intro out of it. It's great. <laughs> well, I had, um, there are some bloopers I couldn't share. You know what I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, where everything goes wrong and you're cursing like a drunken sailor. But. Uh... <laughs> It's, Anyone, the, the best way to get over any kind of self-consciousness is to edit your own videos. Like, you see yourself with those weird expressions and pause moments and everything. Once you do that, it's like, it's very hard to offend it. you. You've ripped off all the masks. You're like, this mm -hmm. is me. <laughs> I've seen myself at my lowest. You can't touch me anymore. <laughs> it's like Hollywood can't do anything. No one can say anything. No one can <laughs> really fight. You're, you're done. You've reached that level. Well, now, let's bring out the sagacious year from Midnight's Edge, the one man who could untangle a tapestry of Hollywood lies like nobody else. The Viking of Vision, Andre from Midnight's Edge. Well, greetings. That was another amazing intro. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure to, to be back. And also, pleasure to be on stream with uh, Disparu for the very first time. Oh, wonderful. See, we love bringing people together here who haven't streamed before. And that's awesome. It creates, you know, we get awesome information it's glide a lot of exciting new insights so how are you doing my friend i'm doing excellent well as, uh, as excellent as can be given that i just saw madam webb uh which is uh, something i was uh, delaying for as long as possible but um wife wanted to see it so i had to bite the bullet eventually wow that must have been painful 
Uh, yeah, it was for both of us. For both of you. We you also quickly regretted wanting to see that one, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Did you check it out, Disbro? Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Um, I was just going to uh, cover sort of other people's reviews at first. And then when they were so bad, like the, the, everyone went for this. ABC News came out and started hating on it for no reason. I didn't even know they did movie reviews. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where once I hear something's bad enough, I've got to see it just to, just to find out what it's like with my own eyes. Wow. To me, that's the most fantastic thing because I I have covered the movie, but I've covered the meta discussion around mm. it, namely how it is changing the industry. So I haven't really needed to see the movie because it's universally recognized as bad. The very same media outlets, as you pointed out, this Baru, that normally would be first in the line to defend it, they're the ones throwing it under the bus and attacking it. Yeah, That's quite something. You, you they are. Places like the, the places like Mary Sue did a review about how much they liked it, and then later on kind of changed their mind when everyone else hated it. And are now doing things about the five biggest disasters of Madame Web. <laughs> so, well... It's funny how that works. I mean, that even reminds me of uh, of the Rings of Power Ugh. with the Guardian. They were the prime example right there, because they wrote initially a glowingly positive review, but it was filled with hedges. And if you read it in detail, what appeared to be a glowingly positive review was in reality a negative review with all the kind of hedges that they could go back to and say later, see, we hated it all along. And indeed, five, six weeks later, they came out with a follow-up article saying, let's be honest, this whole thing was a mess the whole time. And then, what you know, they went straight back to the very hedges they themselves had planted. So they could say, we hated it all along, although we let it, uh, we, it appeared as we praised it when it first came out. So, before we yeah, go, the duplicity right there. Before we go on, let's bring out our surprise guest. He decided to come. He's my good friend. This is a man with wit that is razor sharp like a surgeon. He can take woke apart like nobody else. Jonas Campbell. He wanted to come in today. How are you doing, Jonas? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Absolutely. And man, uh, glad to be on the uh, receiving end of one of those fabulous introductions. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. Did you see Madam Webb? I have not uh, had that. I was going to say pleasure, but <laughs> not quite the right word. I think they should pay you. I think modern Hollywood movies today <laughs> should pay us. You know, like you, you go to this, you go to the cinema, and they're like, "Okay, here's twenty bucks. Here's your free popcorn and drink. Go watch." Yeah, uh, I, I think the greatest indication to me was uh, Chris Stuckman, who will say something positive about anything. Literally said, "I am not." even going to talk about the quality of this film. Instead, let's talk about the studio system. <laughs> no, well, it is. It, it's like, how do you, I mean, I would view Madam Webb. I went, I saw, I stayed for 30 minutes and I got up. I, I couldn't take anymore. I'm just like, I I'm not going to read. <laughs> yes, I went, I saw, and I saw it perfectly said this, but I, I just couldn't. I was like, I'm not going to review the movie. I should review it, but I'm not going to. Because it's like, have you ever had that time where you, you see something so bad that you just want to say like, you look to the camera and go, just don't go. Like, it, it's not worth it. It's shit. Just leave. That's the review. Have a good day. See you later. Now, here, here, here's Barbie. a question I have for you. The, the cultural touchstone here for me is The Room, which is in some ways the worst film I have ever seen, but also is a comedy classic <laughs> on another level. Is it is it even comparable to that where where it is so bizarre and strange on screen that there's an entertainment value there or it's it's just bad it, it's like me too someone decided to put me too to a script threw in a few woke angles a lot of bad storytelling i was who was i on yesterday i was on yesterday on salty nerds podcast and the guys were sitting there saying that uh, it looks like it was written by uh chat uh gpt and i was like sitting there going yeah no that could do a better job <laughs> it, it was that bad it, it's like no none of the women looked feminine and i'm like what happened to the days when you could look at well, come on we've all been there well, you want to like look and i'll go like the women go that they're hot you know a little bit culture was saying a little bit of titillation i'm like there was no tit there was no t there was no i there was just they looked like they were 15 year old tomboys and they looked uncomfortable you know when you can tell an actor doesn't really want to do the part or something's changed in the production that's what I felt from it. Like, 
they're like, don't want to do this. Well, there's a whole, um, I was just before this stream started, I was reading a thread that was sort of, what was it? All the times Dakota Johnson hated on the movie during her own press tour. And one of them, the guy asks her, so who do you think will win the Oscars? And he's just setting her up with an easy question. And she goes, Oppenheimer. And he's like, no, it, it's Madam Webb. And then she looks at like her person in the room and goes, that'd piss everybody off, wouldn't it? Can you imagine if that happened? And, she, and you leave it and you're like, no way. She reminds me of Rachel Zegler. I, I remember, because I've covered Zegler just like you have. I've covered her in death. But the funniest thing that stuck out to me is that she did the same thing for every movie. When she was doing Shazam Fury of the Gods, you know, that whole that, the whole press junket. She gets, I think it was a guy from Screen Rant. He's like, so what is your favorite movie of the year? And she's like, well, it's not Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like you understand it's a softball lady you're supposed yeah. to say yeah my movie and she looks at him you're serious right because he looked at her kind of like you're joking right it's the damn she's like no <laughs> i have to say i think that those interviewers are pretty nasty though in a sense because they are they they know that they are setting and uh setting the actor and actress up for for questions that can't really be answered honestly mm. because every actor and every actress ever is going to have to say that yeah this one what about if, if it's like an uh, actor actress that have like two three different movies coming out in the in the same year and then they can be asked that question in principle for each and every one of them i have to say i think that's a pretty not defending uh, Rachel Zegler or anything, but right. I, that is a fairly cheeky question that uh, an okay. entertainment journalist should know better than to ask, because it's just a gotcha and nothing else. And it's a the, dishonest one giving that this is like, I'd expect that for someone like us. Right. But this is the entertainment media complex that they're supposed to kind of like be on their side. And they, they're they just like humiliating the actor and actresses in a way. I have to say, I think yeah. that's nasty. I never thought about it that way, Andre, but see, that's why I love having you on. You gave some insight that I know. I mean, I thought it was the guy was from Screen Rant. So he was trying to puff, should know better. He was trying to know. puff him up. He was trying to puff him up. But every time he turned around and threw one of these softball questions, it I don't know if it's her character. I don't know if it's her age. I don't know if she's it's just I hate no, it's all, look, I, like, I, I'm not defending her. In right. No, no, I get what you're it's saying. Yeah. But it it's, it's 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 you can say that it's supposed to be a softball question, but what the moment you have two or more movies coming out in the same year, you answer that. You yeah. just threw the other one under yeah. the bus. Yes. And if, if, if I was them to promote both, if I was them marketing the movie, I would just say the first one was going to get the Oscar, and when the second <laughs> one came out, I'd say that was get the Oscar. That that's literally the answer you're supposed to give, and every person would be happy in that situation. Yeah. I, I do, now I do think these people set them up, but I think they set them up as you saw with Rachel Ziegler, like, um, so what do you think of the movie? It's going to have a modern edge, right? You're going to change it to the modern audience, are you? And you can see, like, the glee when they're answering back. And when they're telling something like, yeah, you know, all the people are going to hate it. Uh, we're changing everything. We're, we're, we're making it so she's going to be a queen and she's not going to get married. Um, the, the, the journalists egg her on. They're like, yes, yes, give us more. Oh, I absolutely agree with you. I've got any, anything else for us. So there is a... They, they do set them up, but I'm not sure it's... I don't think it's intentional with this. Do you um, think they have that kind of disparate? Do you think they have that kind of critical reasoning ability? Like, or it's just, just part of their process? I think they know a story and they uh, know that they can, yeah. they know that they can make a title. Rachel Ziegler re remaking Snow White for a modern audience. She's not going to marry the prince. And they know that will go viral on social media. Everyone will hate it and they get the clicks. And um, also, and they don't get blamed for it. Also, very often they're in on it. And they will know that, yeah, this is what the studio wants out there. We have been informed. We are supposed to ask about this because the studio wants that talking point. Very often they'll listen to it. Like whenever you get like these very softball spoon fed questions that they have canned answers for, it's because the questions are equally canned. Mm. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll also add, and Andre and I have talked about this uh, many times, that uh, moment when Rachel Ziegler said, it's not 1937 anymore. Uh, Gal Gadot, or Gadot, or however that's pronounced, uh, said the nearly the same exact thing uh, yeah. at the same event. 
So, so that was talking a talking point. It, yeah, it was a canned event. And it was also D23. So they had full right. control of the press list as well. So uh, they, they wanted it out there that, oh, no, this is not your mother's Snow White, uh, which is, of course, the worst thing to say when the 100 year history of your company is based off of your mother's Snow White. You, you made an excellent point, Jones. Think about it. It's like neither. And I loved Godot. Not for her acting. She's just gorgeous. I, I can't tell. You. That's it. She's gorgeous. I look at her and I'm like, yeah, okay, wh whatever. I don't care what you do. But uh, except for Poison the Culture. The problem is, is neither of the actresses seem to know their history. It's like to say that I think the impact was so great because Snow White is what built Disney. I mean, Walt himself bet everything. I mean, he's like he bet the house, the farm, the kids. He put quite everything. Liter borrowed quite money. literally, yes, right. he borrowed against his own house, and and probably, and I think that was his. His parents ended up moving into that house later to tragic. But uh, of course, if you look at the Disney corporate office building right now, it's literally held up by statues of the seven dwarfs, right. uh, and that that symbolic meaning would not have been lost on the people who built. Uh, that that humongous building. And now it's just uh, the place where Bob Iger takes several showers a day. And see, I think that's what leads us right into our first topic. It is the, I was reading the D files because we've, we had Alan Ng on here a couple of weeks ago and they've been doing, you know, that deep dive into what really is going on behind the scenes with Disney and how, how did it change and transform. And one of its consequences has been that, you know, now they're being sued. We got, you know, Gina Carano is suing, is suing them for how they treated her and how they fired her. And when I was reading into it and looking at the D files, right, it's you had almost Disney was slowly invaded or, or cannibalized. They at the same time they cannibalized all their real talent while they were filling it in with these with these. I don't know what you want to call them, like activists, radicals, but they really didn't have talent. They picked people from Tumblr. They picked people from Instagram. They picked people from Twitter. And they were going into it saying that they never studied, you know. And yes, people can have talent who are on Instagram and Tumblr, but they don't have the training or the experience to know like, okay, this is a good piece of animation maybe, but it doesn't fit into this story structure that you've created. And once those individuals got in, then they started forming what Alan described as friend squads. They started hitting bank like hit groups of culture warriors to hire their friends and their friends and their friends and then keep everybody else out who had any voice. And so we end up with Gina Carano, who's suing Lucasfilm with the help of Elon Musk. And I think that's phenomenal. Uh, these kind of lawsuits are the only way this kind of stuff changes because a lot of what they're doing is just blatantly illegal. But... Mm -hmm unless they actually get sued and somebody forces them to do something, it's such a massive corporation, they can kind of get away with it. Um, and so lawsuits are only the way around this. And it's one of those things where, because there was a lot of discussion um, when I saw uh, sort of the lawyer sphere of YouTube talking about it, that it's probably going to settle. It's like, yeah, but even if it does, I'm not sure it matters that much. No. It is a case of, you have sent the message that if you behave this way, because essentially Elon's doing this for Twitter. He doesn't want you to be fired for things that you say on Twitter. And so just having the lawsuit there and being this will cost you money will be a message to companies that you shouldn't be doing it. And the next time it comes around, because this happened multiple times with various different people, they will think twice about taking something there. And I think once you get people more confident that they know there's not going to be lose their job for just saying the truth, then freedom of speech comes around, the best ideas start to win, and I think it just changed things. Uh, but what you were talking about, about them hiring people, there's still a lot of... There's se several assumptions people make. One of them is that everyone shares the same morality of you about what is good and evil, and the other is that um, businesses are there to make money, and they don't have their own sort of values and principles. It's like The company may not, because it's not a person, but it is full of people who all have their own agendas and desires, and if they think that's more important than money, and these people do, then they can take over the company that way. And you, you say they're not hired for like the quality of the talent and stuff, but to them, the category of each person, all of the things that they will list down as a checkbox, that is the quality. They do think that Madam Web is good just because it's got a load of women in it. You think that they really believe that deep down, like when they're looking in the mirror where they're going, yes, I worked on this and this is a phenomenal flick. Like you can stand up against quality MCU material. Like, I mean, uh, from Sony or it can stand up against Spider-Man No Way Home or even the first Venom. Like I don't see it as... Like, do they really believe that? And like in their heart, you think so? 
you have to ask like why what people value um and a lot of people value the whole virtue signaling that is the pleasure that they get from it they pro they don't care about Madame Webb as a character, mm -hmm. but them speaking out about how great it is and how you're such a bigot for not liking it in the first place, that's the enjoyment you get out of it. And if, like, for me, I enjoyed um, She-Hulk because I make videos of it, right. which I enjoyed making, which made me like the show. And so if you really enjoy virtue signaling and crapping on all these people over there, you attach those feelings to the content. You're like, yeah, this is amazing because I get something else out of it that is pleasurable. So I do genuinely think it's that way. And like when the Mary Sue makes a review like that, I think they genuinely right. believe what they're writing. I, I gotta check that out while we're talking. I didn't know that they had done that. But but it's it's interesting. Have you noticed that as a trend where they're slowly starting to it's like what Andre was saying, they were hedging their bets. You have a lot of people hedging their bets lately. You didn't see that in twenty twenty one, but you're starting to see it more. I, we saw that with Rings of Power. Mm, yeah. Um there was the honest reviews and stuff came out. Uh, so I think it's definitely something that people do. The, the, especially with mainstream media, they have um, difficulty in that they will get interviews with the actors and stuff months in advance. They'll have done all these exclusive reveals for the series, and then it comes time to review it. I, I don't think they can say that it's ass after they've just done all that and they've got in bed with the studios. So mm. I can understand they have to hedge their bets in a way. It, I, I wonder as well if, uh, if if it came out better than they were imagining in their head once the thing actually appeared in front of them if uh, especially with the uh, rings of power there are a lot of elements in there that, that 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 could remind someone of tolkien that could remind someone of what peter jackson was able to accomplish mm -hmm. uh, especially if they have no sense of taste or if they're looking <laughs> at their phone at the same time but there are moments in there that that i if they're not looking at it on the whole, or if they've been so into it for a long time that they've lost the forest for the trees, uh, here, I that that stupid line about why does a ship fall in the <laughs> a stone? Wait, I, <laughs> I can't. Even what, what, what was that? A ship in a? I remember it was. Just I genuinely believe that they thought that they were being talkingness grand, yeah that they Deep. were being grand they were saying something mm -hmm. with grandeur and eloquence and importance when they wrote that and they were wrong but but that's one case i think that most of the time this body was right i don't think that they that any of them think that oh here we have written she hulk and it stands right alongside the avengers or mm -hmm. iron man or something no, no 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 i don't think they attached that level of quality to it but they attach the level of importance to it we have made a political statement here we have changed culture and as activists that is what we value i think that is how they see it in the case of uh, rings of power i think it was both i think it was we have changed culture and boy we sure did tolkien better than tolkien did we that they no. are that lost yeah well, well that does make sense if you think about it in the way that uh that a christian views a faith film they'll they'll give it a pass in certain things because they oh right. yes you've spoken truth in the middle of this uh awful movie with this uh star from a sitcom you used to watch when you were a child um I, I I've cheered for those on some level. I maybe am not going to be as unkind to it as I would a, a standard Hollywood film that is really good, except they put something filthy in the middle of this child's cartoon. Um, I, I, I think that if you view it as a faith film for this woke religion, then I can understand why they're giving it a pass. Okay. Now that we're talking about Disney for a second, we have our other guest. This guy's pen is mightier than Excalibur. He wrote the D files and he's here. Some people know him as Ming the Merciless. Let's bring in Alan Ng. He's coming back. Hey, there him. we go. How you doing, my friend? Good. Good. Hey, hey I wanted to show you guys something. Uh look, I found this in an old box. No, Boba. <laughs> this is this is the original. I had yeah. to uh cut out the proof of purchases, uh mail it off, and I got this guy in return. God, I miss those. Did you remember you used to have to collect X amount depending on what it was? And it's like, yeah. I love those days. That yeah, mind like... you, Empire Strikes Back hadn't come out at that point. So it was just kind of this mystery character that we knew was going to be in the next movie. I, I was looking at your D files part, part three. That was even more mind blowing than the <laughs> first two. I can't wait for four. But what really fascinated me is I was having a conversation with a friend of mine that I grew up with in school. He works in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he does uh, audio engineering. I never quite a ASDR something. He says ADR. ADR. Uh, yeah. ADR. 
And they had six months ago, right? I'm trying to get them on the show. But they had six months ago, uh, they were given a mandate that they had to fill 50% of the slots in the company with women. And he's like, well, wait a minute. Women aren't interested in ADR. He's like, I've been doing this for 20 years. And he goes, I know one. One. And he's like, how are you going to fill it? He's like, we don't care. That's your job. Go go, go find him. You, find. You know, they're telling everybody. And I noticed that about in your, uh, in the D files, you're talking about the friend squads and how the animation studio, how everything changed. Can you, can you shine yeah. a little bit of light on that? Well, I mean, you, you kind of brought it up all there. Uh, they needed female animators. They needed female artists. And there weren't enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they couldn't go to CalArts and fill those spots, the, they went to Tumblr. Uh, they went to social media. Uh, I mean, they, they specifically said that. And, uh, um, and they just found people who did art. And uh, they brought them in and because they couldn't fill the, all the seats. Hey, refer us to your friends. And uh, and what wound up happening was maybe in, inadvertently or advertently, uh, they brought in uh, you know people who were just uh, you know had kind of a a chip to grind, uh, a chip on their shoulder, an axe to grind. There we go. I'm getting my metaphor. But where was the where was the one guy? It's like where was the well? I'll, it's a business. But where was the mom or dad in the equation going? Whoa, 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 whoa! We are supposed to entertain people. Yeah. Are you talking about John Lasseter? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <ooh. laughs> yeah. He got, he, yeah. yeah where, where was he? What happened to him? Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can we just hammer in one point? Because uh, first, Alan, that was some great coverage. And of course, mm -hmm. we did, uh, did a video on it as well. And the thing that I hammered in there, which I think doesn't get enough attention, when a company like Disney asks for 50% representation among their mm -hmm. animators, there doesn't exist enough qualified female animators that that goal can be met. It's the same thing with mm -hmm. your friend who's doing ADR. The talent, the female talent that can do that in the numbers needed mm -hmm. to get to 50% doesn't exist. That, that's it, Andre. That's what my friend was telling me. He's like, I don't know. They, they, they're not interested in it. He's but like... Same thing with female animators, and that is the whole reason. And of course, Alan Ng does say it, but I just want to hammer in that more. It's not that that women have been kept out or something. No, mm. the talent that is qualified to the level that they ask for doesn't exist. I, that I is think why it, they have to lower the standards. I, I, I made think, a joke I think a while ago. Oh, let me just say, I made a joke a while ago about, you know, female run businesses, and I go, I will support a female run business uh, as long as they. Uh, work in a building that was built by females. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I think I think the goal is equality. The goal, I mean, 50-50 is, it feels like it's, it's a good goal to get, but it's not a realistic why? goal. But why, why, why is any quota? Look, I view quotas as shackles. Quotas as shackles. It should be hire the best people. That's it. It should be married. But hire, I don't care what you look like what you believe in, what you do. Are you the best in this field? Are you the best actor? Are you the best producer? Are you the best Foley engineer? Are you the best? That's all. Mm -hmm. This whole quota thing, it, it's like we went, it's like the more you try to force equality, the less you get. That's why um, I'm against the whole, because it's a, it's a defensive posture to say things like, well, the people don't exist at that standard to fill these roles because you're kind of implicitly accepting that it's the good, right thing to do in the first place. And it isn't. Uh, it doesn't matter who's in the job. It doesn't matter where they are. What it matters is, are you making something that the um, the audience actually likes? And that's irrelevant of who's employed. Uh, you said before, like, where was the person that stopped all of this? Well, that would be like the money man or the guy who's overseeing it. The reason why I never stopped is because he would have got fired for discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because if he suddenly turned around and said, well, these women can't do the job. We're like, well, now you're discriminated against women. So you, you, there you go. Bye. In this bye. country, you're likely to get sued or arrested for saying that kind of comment, despite the yeah. fact that you hired people you knew couldn't do the job in the first place. So yeah, my... it's very difficult once you fill your company like this to get rid of them, because now they've got a whole bank of legislation that you hired them specifically for this purpose, and now you are discriminating against them. 
for the reason so you, you can't get so you can't get rid of them is what you're saying and it just slowly eats away at the company yeah. which is what we're well, saying let me, let me add to that let, let me add to that uh my my inside source said disney um when they came in i mean he saw talent there mm-hmm. and he was more than willing to mentor and help but they didn't want to hear from the old white guy right and so the new talent mm-hmm. just felt like that they were good enough and they didn't need help and they didn't need you know to be have things mansplained to them <laughs> and that's when that's when you know y- you would think you're building a community there and that's where you see the beginnings of uh, of a very toxic environment because any help he might have offered might have gotten him uh, sent to hr sent to hr this, this, this is uh, such a fascinating thing to me because animation is such a a distinct skill first of all you have to have artistic ability uh, the ability to even create an image on its own. Second, you have to uh, follow the rules of animation uh, that you could say set forth by the the nine old men, Disney's nine old men that uh, all were sent to school (laughs) in order to be able to make uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And also they need to be uh, able to act because animation is acting with a pen uh, essentially or a computer in our our current world. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is such a specific micro, it, it is a subset of a subset of a subset and for them to say oh just go get women it's like it, it, it's like when i go downstairs and i tell my sons that they have to let their four-year-old sister play now i'm not saying that anyone who is a, a female animator is is a four-year-old versus uh right. something more grown uh um, that would have been funny yeah <laughs> um we, we all know the nature of the game changes when you start putting in these quotas here no we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna obliterate the other team if i'm making you uh let your toddler sister play uh mm-hmm. Fortnite with you the the idea here is to let everyone have the ball and feel good about themselves see i i, I hate that but chris gore is in the chat hey chris we got the other half of film you, yeah. you got your you got your other half is in the chat yeah. if you want to come on you're welcome on but uh, I like the fact that he says he game splains. I think the best way to deal with bad employees is to fire them. I mean, to continue to have them go on and on. But but we come back to this. We see all the fruits of this, both on the big screen, and we can see it now with Gina Carano. But there's another lawsuit. I don't know if anyone caught that. Today, does anyone remember George Santos, that Republican rep? Did y'all hear about him? He's now filed a suit. I'm like, okay. So everybody's jumping on the let, let's sue the hell out of Disney, which hey, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm like, go for it, whatever you want to do. So George Santos now is suing Disney, ABC, and Jimmy Kimmel for broadcasting phony cameos. This is why they're suing him. <laughs> because Were they Kimmel, not realistic? <laughs> yeah. Well, because what Kimmel did was is he set the dude up. He set the rep up. Here, let me see if I can. I'll be parceling these out over the next week. I didn't say they're for me. I just wrote them and sent them to find out, will Santos say it? Okay, so. All right, so this is the request. Uh, The request was, George, please congratulate my friend Gary Fortuna for winning the Clearwater Florida beef eating contest. He ate almost six pounds of loose ground beef in under 30 minutes, which was a new record. Not feeling great right now. Doctor thinks he'll be released from the hospital soon. Please wish him a speedy recovery. All right. Will Santos say it? Let's find out. Hey, Gary Fortuna. George Santos here. I just wanted to stop by to congratulate you for winning the Clearwater Florida Beef Eating Contest. (laughs) That is kind of funny. It is a all-time new record, which is amazing and impressive. Congratulations for the win. I know you're feeling a little under the weather, but I hear from a great source that the doc. So that's pretty much it. Well, we got it. So Sanders is saying how that damaged his reputation. <laughs> it's destroyed him, and now he's yeah. joining on the bandwagon. What I find interesting is the fact that when you combine that, we got Gina, you know, lover warrior queen she's leading the charge got back in with musk and then you have the federal suit this is what i really like you have the suit against Disney because come on every studio that's practicing dei i mean i used to bring this up in the rings of recycled fantasy videos the rings of power videos i go one by one through the amazon thing look at what they're doing i mean you had from and y'all did that video which was called out uh, by musk which was brilliant when you have to have your script, when you have to have your script right, when you have to have the acting, casting, casting director, everyone has to follow this DEI protocol. I mean, I don't know what else to call that but racism. 
yeah. you, you get to a point where you're like, okay, Hollywood and the corporate culture has somehow trying to find a way to legalize racism. So now we have this one with Disney because it's like they're under siege. Disney slapped with civil rights complaint over 50% D. I go for underrepresented actors and crew that sidelines white Christian men using files like by Elon Musk. You know, Aldi did that a week ago up in Ohio. It didn't get a lot of press. I think the quartering covered it where they put out a notice, you know, to hire. They needed new employees. And uh, it included everyone, even those who had went to jail, except for white people. So, this is um, a problem that's going to keep happening, like I say, until lawsuits come for it. But it is spread, it, like it's not just Disney, it's in every company, every major corporation is all doing the same thing. Um, and I think one of the main issues, because people generally go off incentives, so if you're rewarded for something, you keep going for it. And all of society essentially is now rewarded to people who are pretending to be a victim. If you can claim to be a bigger victim than someone else, you can get people to feel sorry for you, and you get free stuff. And if you notice this, it, this is why I keep saying it's always self-interest. Every time I've ever seen an actor or anyone who works in the industry who preaches this stuff, they're always like, yeah, there isn't many roles for like a female director who just happens to be a female director. I've never seen anybody go, we need more of this group, which they have nothing to do with and wouldn't benefit from in any in a movie. And so you've got all these people who are essentially doing it for selfish reasons, but trying to pretend they're virtuous, trying to claim that they're after the underdog um, to get other, other support on their side. I, th I think... It's one of the most horrific things that ever happened, but I think every single person involved in it who uses this kind of stuff is horrific in themselves. It's I, I do think it's an inverted morality. I think it's a, it's a brand new moral structure which people are taking on because it benefits them. Mm. I like that. Uh, did you discover anything else, Alan or Andre? Well, first, I, I feel bad for you guys. Uh, I hope <laughs> things get better. <laughs> <laughs> And it also makes me think I worked way too hard in my life to get where I'm at. I, I should have been coasting and uh, and I wasn't able to. I actually had to work harder than most people. No, no, Which, no, uh, Alan, Alan, you, you seem to be confused. <laughs> you're 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 not a person of color. You're Asian. You're you're literally. Uh, yeah, on you'd be discriminating against more than us. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you this this never helped me at, at all in my life. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, I, my mom passed away last year, but um, in the in the 60s, she was a computer programmer. She was one of the very few in her field, uh, very few women in her field. Mm -hmm. uh, she she went very far in the industry. She worked for a UCLA, did a lot of great computer science research there, and uh, and inspired uh, several of my cousins to go into to computers, engineering, and so on. But but the reality is is that, uh, that my mom was an exception, you know. And she she all throughout my life, she never. She never uh, talked about it. She just loved her job and did her job. And I think that kind of passed on to me and my brothers. Uh, you know, I'm not in necessarily a, a uh, minority field. or, but, uh, but, you know, you just work hard and you work at it and you're able to get through. And you just have to accept certain realities. Uh, and to kind of force it diminishes that field. And that's, that's kind of the other side of the racist argument. It's, it's not only racist, it's, uh, it, it, causes the quality of that to suffer well andre where do you think disparu mentioned it earlier that the lawsuit that gina was doing is good in of itself whether they settle or outside and then jones are asking saying that they might settle do you think the combination of these three where you have carano with backing with musk and then the civil rights suit with uh, i think it's from american legal foundation and absolutely. now absolutely absolutely yeah. because even if they settle it sets a precedent mm -hmm. because just consider this: the only time a settlement happen is when the uh, is when the suing side is going to win, and the side who, under normal circumstances, are more powerful, and they figure if this thing gets to court, it's going to be really, really embarrassing for us, and it's going to be very expensive for us, which is why we're going to settle right away and get this whole matter done with so it doesn't explode in our faces that is when you settle a big corporation like disney doesn't settle unless they think they're going to to lose that's, that's good so it's good for us 
yeah, it is good for us because that sets a precedent that Disney actually caved. It's not going to get much press, but anyone paying attention here, what that means is that Disney are in the wrong. That means you just have to get another lawsuit and another one and another one. And eventually you're going to find one that actually goes all the way through and then they lose. And then you have a legal precedent. That is what they're terrified of. Disney are terrified of a legal precedent being set because the moment that happens, laws actually may be changed. And here's the irony with all of these things which are meant to enhance representation. And whenever Disney talks about underrepresented groups, the only underrepresented group in Western entertainment right now is the majority population in Western nations. Yeah. The only ones who are underrepresented in American movies and TV right now, if you want to be technical about it, is 70% of the population, which is white people, because less than 70% of featured characters and everything is white people. All of those who are uh, labeled as underrepresented are in reality overrepresented as it is. And all of the stuff that's being done at Disney, Amazon, all these other places, the only thing it's going to do is make groups which are already overrepresented relative to population, wildly overrepresented relative to population. I mean, just look at the LGBTQIA plus population, which accounts for what? Between five percent, three, three, five, five yeah, like that. Depending Mine. on what you think, and if you really dig into the numbers, it's probably going to be even less. Yeah, and how much of the output from Disney is catering to this underrepresented group? What thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've blown it out of proportion. They've blown it out of proportion, Andre. Wild overrepresentation. Trying to make it even more inclusive than it already is. How how could you go even further? I mean, they're no longer the majority of how like the other day, Cynic and I we released a video of the top seven Hollywood movies of 2023, right? You know how long it took me to find seven good Hollywood movies in 2023? I mean, seriously, it's like I was digging and digging and going all year. But it's like Hollywood no longer makes people movies for I'm gonna say normal people, everyday people. It's they're making it for such skewed, well, small to be fair, groups. To be fair, I mean, normal, uh, the majority of Western yeah. society. We're talking about family friendly or action based or storytelling. There's not stories, they feel more like soapbox messages. Oh, yeah, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, think of it this way uh, Lightyear came out, it, mm -hmm. it, it had the LGBT element. Guess what? The LGBT community didn't come out and support that movie. Uh, they made Little Mermaid. Uh, they cast the lead as an African American. Uh, the black community did not come out and support that movie. Um, you know, th that's you know the, the Marvels. You know, it was meant for. You know, I think they were shooting the moon with that and trying to get the, a broad audience, but no one showed up to it because people are tired of it. It does as much as you put quote unquote people who look like us in that movie. Uh, you know, you still have to tell a good story. Otherwise, we're not going to show up. No one's yeah. going to show up. And, and that's exactly what happened here. You're right about that. I'm going to get to Jonas has to get going. And I want to bring up two Super Chats that we're going to read this through the Super Chats, the ones that refer to him before he leaves. Then we're going to actually then put a pin in that. We'll get back to that. There's a video I want to share. Lover of Green for $10. Jonas, have you seen Haley's on it? It's a 2D Disney cartoon about a San Diego girl trying to prevent climate change. It's a complete disaster. It has cheap animation and Tumblr level writing. I have had a copy of uh, Haley's on it on my server. Somehow this uh, ended up uh, maybe through <laughs> the high seas on my machine. And uh, I have yet to do an everything woke about on it. Um, I got to say with the recent events around the pro channel and my channel that uh, you know, maybe everything woke will be coming back, but I might need to crowdfund that uh, in order to make it lucrative. That being said, yes, I'm aware of the show. It's America Ferrara and it is who it's woke. Um, I, I will say, um, uh, yeah. Uh, and thank you for the the comment and the support of uh, George here. He's awesome. Oh, thank you, Jonas. On a scale from one to 10, how woke? 10 plus? 
Uh, well, I mean, d d depending on how you 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 view it, and I, and I have not had the pleasure of watching the entire series yet, but the the entire thing is about changing the future towards uh, something uh, that is mm -hmm. uh, more in line with uh, with that current climate change narrative. Okay, and then from WDW Pro for five dollars, race is proxy for binary power grouping by elites. I've I've always thought that woke is a four letter word for control, but I think yeah, that's changed. Um, here, here's the thing that I, I, I want to say here, and, and this guy uh, every now and then stumbles into a good point. I, I like him a lot. Uh, good business partner here. Um, the thing that I would say with with all of this, and Andre kind of hinted at it, is is this is a very white ethnocentric idea. The idea that we, these, these, uh, these white folks over in America, are going to dictate culture for the rest of the world and say, oh, we are your voices of diversity. By the way, what an arrogant idea. <laughs> Here, uh, while wh while these people would uh, would say that America has no right to be the military police of the rest of the world, uh, that's a disgusting idea. They would rather be the moral police of the rest of the world. I'm sure that uh, all of the people over in China, in India, in Africa, really love all of these uh, white leftist Americans uh, dictating to them what diversity looks like. The uh, there was a video that uh, got taken down off of Twitter of this new Ariel Disney Junior series. And uh, they've made Triton and Ursula, uh, Aunt Ursula, by the way, uh, and um, and of course, Ariel, black, and all of the side characters are also uh, black or Latino. No problem in and of itself there. But what was hilarious in the video was all the senior vice presidents that were there promoting it, a bunch of white people, white women, white guy. So uh, all the people in charge um, uh, you know, what, what is it called when, uh, white people use, uh, use the image of, uh, of, uh, diversity, uh, for their own gain in entertainment? Is that, there's, Does it there's have a word something for that. to do with appropriation or something, mayhaps? Uh, Stupidity, yeah. ego, yeah. <laughs> Cultural appropriation. Wow. The thing is, it's not just, it's not a Western view, it's an American view. It doesn't even make sense in Europe. Like, uh, if you if you try and group me and a Frenchman into the same group, you'll offend us both. So like, <laughs> we are not the same. Me. Over here is more about nation than it is um, color. It's but isn't that what they're the trying to? But isn't that what they're trying to do though? To make you, know, you all uh, one? It, it, yeah, but it's being imported from America via things like movies. And here's stuff. here's and a fascinating things. thing. A little bit of uh, Disney trivia for you. Do you know why they do drone shows at uh, Disneyland Paris? No. Because every time they set off fireworks, the French kept surrendering. <laughs> I love you, Jonas. Do you have to go now? I do. I do. I've oh, got a. I, I got a thing that that it's the same thing that keeps me off of Valiant shows, even though uh, I love them. Um, one thing I'll say is um, we are we're a little bit handcuffed right now in what we can and can't promote. I think I'm fine to say that the pro show will not be happening this Tuesday at noon. Uh, mm -hmm. And that just by coincidence, there will be a, a very similar show on uh, that park place on Tuesday at noon Eastern time. Um, and, and there'll be more to comment on there. Thank you very much for uh, having me on oh. and uh, for your support and the things that you've Absolutely. said on Twitter. Everybody here has, has been uh, very supportive, except for Dispro, who I'm just meeting here for the first time. Um, I, well, I just... Uh, I, I got to run, but George, you uh, have an amazing channel, and I love hearing your commentary. I'm going to check out the replay here. So uh, oh. thank you, and I hope to come back again sometime. Oh, man. absolutely. You're always welcome here. Tell everybody that Park Place, what time will the show be on so we, everybody can go to it on Tuesday? Uh, well, uh, I appreciate it. So uh, the same time of day as Midnight's Edge, uh, okay. whatever time zone you happen to be in, uh, Midnight's Edge is on Mondays and in, in, in Andre is our, our collaborator, but we're not working together on this. We just happen to collaborate on schedules here. Okay. Monday is Midnight's Edge. Tuesdays will be Amateur Hour uh, with Pro. And uh, well, then Wednesdays, Midnight's Edge. Thursdays, That Park Place Live. And then, of course, Fridays, Midnight's Edge uh, as well. So thank you very much, George. Thank you. Nice to, nice to meet you, Dispru. Andre thank and Alan, you. continue being yeah. awesome. See yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. Have, have, a, have, have a wonderful day. And Jonas, um, Pro, if there's anything we can do, let us know, and I'll do anything I can. Thank you. We're st we're still plotting, and we're putting uh, putting together a, a plan for uh, one replacing income, and two, trying to figure out legally what just happened here. So uh, more on that soon. Thank you.
Okay. Fantastic. Bless you, my friend. And uh, also just to, to add in to what we're saying that this body is, of course, right. As uh, the other European here, I can also wholeheartedly chime in to Europe has a history we hate of each other. horrible, horrible <laughs> ideas. But as it is right now, America is importing mm -hmm. the wokeness to the rest of the world, first and foremost to Europe. And most of all to the UK, because I'm just witnessing what is happening. Like Norway, we, we've gotten away relatively lightly. I won't say we got away scot free, but we've gotten away relatively lightly compared It's an to interesting the thing, we, um, yeah. just to interject for a second. Uh, because of the way it's built, it like America, it can get over here eat more easily because their culture has the foundation of English culture and so yeah. some of the ideas transfer quite well but when you go into other nations with other cultures and especially different languages well now yeah. the words like privilege don't carry the same kind of mm. words they don't. they don't have the same foundation so it it slows down I feel like you guys are laughing at us absolutely well come on I, I go to Greece <laughs> I go to I used to go to Greece every year I haven't been since I started YouTube I haven't had time so it's been a couple of years but when I was there everything has changed so I, I look at it from the European perspective when I'm in Greece, and I, I view that half the culture is split. I don't know if you all notice that there. It's like uh, this generation, the one that are in high school, won everything that I would view as culturally rotten in America. They want to bring that over. And everybody who's about 30 and above are like, no, no, get this the hell away from us. Keep that shit in America. <laughs> get rid of it. But that there's that there was something interesting that um, in the D files that Alan wrote, there was a video in there which caught my attention that I want to share with all of y'all. It was this one. I know Alan knows what it is. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I was stunned. I, I couldn't believe they actually had the gall to say it. Here we go. Uh, Fawn, you were born and raised in Thailand and grew up being inspired by Disney films. Um, but we do know that women make up only about 20% of key behind the scenes jobs in top grossing films. What do you think some of the barriers are to women getting into the industry and how can companies bring more diverse voices into entertainment? For me, I think I, I had the problem of not knowing the job was a, a thing, you know, was available because I didn't grow up in a big city. And I think with the change of internet and social medias, I think the younger generation will benefit from being able to see the work that millennials like me put out there on social media platforms. And, you know, and for us to be able to see a variety of talents who's putting their work out there, that's kind of changed the landscape of hiring pool traditionally. Now watch, when you go through it, you're going to get basically if the message diversity, Malaysia, diversity, diversity. You, when you grow up, um, in a part of the world where you feel that a lot of Western audiences are not particularly familiar with or aware of and not really seeing yourself, you know, in reflected in major Hollywood movies or global movies. Narcissism. It's easy to sort of assume that, you know. It, it is literally, it's all about me. How can I get a role? Why can't I see myself on the screen? Yes. Because if I need to see myself yeah. on the screen, then... I need to be so that person needs to be represented by someone that looks like them. Well, they look like me, so now I get a job, and it, it's it is always two steps away from. Well, I, you just need to employ me at the end of the day. I need more money. Um, you even see actresses and stuff where they literally tie the morality of a movie down to their size of their bank balance. It's like, well, the more hops I get, the more moral Disney is. It's it's amazing how that works out. Well, you had to, you're right. You had Taraji P. Henson who did that. I didn't mean to, I apologize for interjecting, but you had her do that three weeks ago where she's saying that she works her ass off and she's only worth $12 million and only has two homes. Did like, she's <laughs> like, I'm like, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind that lady. You just said you're worth $12 million, have two homes, one for $6.6 .6 million, the other for three. But she goes, I'm paying out all the staff. Y'all don't understand. She started crying. I'm not being paid what I'm worth because I'm a black woman. You get what you want. Yeah, it, it's this fallacy of of we need to see ourselves, meaning we need to see people who have the same skin color as me uh, on screen. When the reality is, is when we see ourselves on screen, it's when we can identify with the experience that's going on yes. on screen. For example, I took my young teenage Asian daughter to see The Holdovers, and she saw herself in the Paul Giamatti character. Right. And, and because she understands what it's like to be a misfit in life, to be misunderstood. 
and everything that he was going through, she could relate to because that's what she goes through. That's how you see yourself in a movie, not not by the skin color or or the background or the culture or whatever. It's in the story because we all share the same stories, no matter where we are in this world. Okay, wait, wait, I didn't realize it, but we have another guest here. He's just joined us. The maestro of the imagination connoisseurs, Robert Meyer Burnett, my good friend. He's returned again. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to join this conversation, everyone. Alan, good to see you again. Right, Sparrow, good, to see, good to see you. Of course, Andre, always a pleasure. Yeah, likewise. Did you uh, hear boy. what we were talking about? Robert? Oh, yes, and I, I have much to say. Um, the floor is yours. Well, one of the things that I, I, I find distressing and I, I have to say alan the your disney files have been fascinating oh, uh you guys are doing a great job with that um you know we were on culturally a pretty good evolutionary path mm. in terms of uh in, in terms of things like inclusion i mean even like gay marriage was the law of the land and everything was was evolving normally because i think at the end of the day um you know most people Inclusion is just a natural function of how we as people, the more we interact with people, the more we get to know one another, our differences fall aside. And that's especially true in the entertainment business. You know, I've been working on movie sets since 1989. And movie sets are really that, they kind of have that carny atmosphere where, you know, it's a traveling group of players and and it's kind of a microcosm of, of humanity anyway. And so I've been... I've always known film sets, actual production, when you're in production, to be a very diverse kind of a place. But one of the things, especially in entertainment, that people don't talk about much is if you look at the demographic breakdown of America, how many people even want to work in entertainment? And that's, first of all, working in the movies at all is a pipe dream. It's right. craziness. But you and, used to have, I don't mean to cut you off, I just want to add to that so you can carry on. We used to have actors. It used to be 250 to 320,000 actors would fall on LA every year. And then you had, you know, grips, ADR, special effects. Has that fallen off or picked up? Well, I think it's fallen off because all entertainment used to be made in Los Angeles. And now it went to Vancouver. It went to Toronto. It went overseas. And it went to different states, Louisiana, Atlanta, whoever had great uh, tax incentives. So the industry is no longer centralized in Los Angeles the way it used to be. And, you know, I think if you look at like the demographic breakdowns of America, so like black America, according to the 2022 census, you have a little less than 14% of the American population's black of that percentage. How many of those people want to actually pursue a career in entertainment? You know, and that's a much smaller percentage of people. And when you get down to it, let's just say it's 1%. And the Asian population of uh, the United States is even less than that. So of that population, how many people in the Asian community want to go into entertainment? It's around 1%, maybe. There is nobody. If you think about how Spike Lee, for instance, broke through. Spike Lee worked in a sneaker shop, made enough money, and went out and made She's Gotta Have It which was his breakthrough indie film. No one is stopping anybody from making movies. No, anywhere. especially, especially and, now. And now, now there, there is more technology. The firepower you that go. you have, the laptop that I'm speaking to you from, if I take, I literally have everything in my laptop to make a feature film, a Hollywood quality feature film in this laptop. I can edit. I can do visual effects. I can mix sound. Right. Using all the software. The, the problem is it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And this idea, I mean, if you look at social media as a microcosm, YouTube, for instance, right. YouTube is the most diverse place in the world. Anybody who wants to be on YouTube can go be on YouTube. And, and the thing about it is Hollywood, it's very difficult to make movies. Even the best people we've seen this weekend, Madam Webb. Um, even the people with as much money and as much talent and a studio power at their disposal, can make bad films. And if you go back and you look at the indie explosion of, of, of the late eighties and early nineties that gave us Steven Soderbergh, that gave us Spike Lee, that gave us Robert Townsend, that gave us so many other Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino all of these people, um, uh, all of these people were basically self-made. Sure. They have to meet, you have to work within the industry, but this idea that I don't understand, like 
Asia has one of the most vibrant film industries in the world right now. Whether you're watching a movie like The Raid from Indonesia, whether you're watching Japanese cinema, Korean cinema, Hong Kong cinema, there's films being made all around the world. Are those countries diverse? No, was, they're not. But they're, was they're, they're, Parasite? Well, yes. No, they are. Because, like, this is my issue. Hollywood has filled them, um, themselves with a load of people who, okay, so you've ticked, you've ticked every single checkbox you can possibly tick. But you all agree with the same thing. You all have the same values. And I can't relate to those values. To me, those values are evil. So any movie you make kind of repulses me with your message. I often think that the heroes of those movies are actually the villains. And I'm supporting the bad guy. Like, even in Madam Web, the guy was defending himself. He, mm. he thought these people were going to kill him in the future. <laughs> and so he's, he's like, well, I'm going to kill you first then. That's yeah. a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Yeah. But when I watch, like, Korean movies and stuff, those are values and stories that I relate to. I They are... Um, almost universally better than modern Hollywood stuff because those are the things that make me feel something I can associate with the characters. I, uh, they actually make likable characters rather than horrible ones. Squid Game, Godzilla Minus One, any number of, whether it's television series or films, because they're sticking to storytelling. Nobody's going to sit there and tell S.S. Rajamuli when he's making Bahubali or he's doing RRR. Hey, guess what? Where's the black guy? Where's the white guy? You know what I'm saying? They don't go around going, where's your diversity checkbox well, list? Where are you? But they have diversity of values. In Correct. Stories. That's it, though. You nailed it. Diversity of values. They're not looking at skin color. I mean, Dr. Martin Luther King gave his life. I think the man is rolling in his grave today going, people are back looking at color. But let's hold oh. that for one second. Real quick, I want to get through these super chats because people took the time and they're supporting the channel. Let me read to them real quick. They might have some questions for you and then we can get right back to this. Okay, we got, well, from Jonas, J. Campbell for $10. He just left. It's the same thing happened last time, Robert. Well, the first time he was on here, he's like, I can't wait to see and talk to Robert Meyer Burnett. As soon as he leaves, you pop up. Okay, one day. I said one. Gonna... I'd be on my time, one o'clock, because I had to jump uh, off. I was talking I to Cynthia Rothrock. Oh, come on. Well, yeah, well, hold, on, on my... hold on. You're going to, you're going to. I'm going to go off on another tangent. Wait, <laughs> it's Cynthia Rotherock. Okay, got to catch my breath. As soon as I leave, Robert Meyer Burnett joins a live stream. I have to admit that's an upgrade. I'm going to get y'all two together. It's going to happen. Just be patient. So let's see what we have next. We got Footsie Girl for two. Well, disappeared. Hello? Something happened with Footsie Girl playing Footsie. Footsie Girl for $2. How do you explain the UK online safety bill? I think that's directed to this brew. Maybe Andre. Well, I'm not saying... I, I'm not saying we don't have problems. Um, I'm saying uh, this is definitely a cultural thing, and it's one that um, is desired by certain people to be pushed forwards. But what I'm saying is that is like um, almost like an alien graft, which is coming onto a culture. It's not part of the foundation of the culture. It's not where it came from. It's being imported into. So yeah, it's taking exactly. over. It's it's yeah. going in that way, but it's not an innate part of the country. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, as you as you said, because it's the same, very similar culture as the U.S., it's the same language. It's so much easier because all of the key words they instantly translate. Like for instance, what's the Norwegian word for woke? We don't have one because it doesn't exist. Yeah. You still so you have like all of the Norwegian articles and stuff that talk about it. They have to use the English word woke and try to explain it to the readers. Because you know, most people have no clue what it means. White supremacy that don't exist. Patriarchy don't exist. We don't know what any of that stuff is. When they hear that, do they? is it strange to them? Or is it just like they tune it out? Or is yeah, it just background noise? have no idea what the hell it means. Okay. That's interesting. Footsie Girl again for $2. How do you explain, again, the UK's oil e-safe bill? Disper, that's you, I believe. <laughs> I think that's the same question. Same yeah. same yeah. Okay, it was different. okay. I think it's just rephrased. Yeah. No problem. Next one. Footsie Girl for five dollars. DEI is the global Peter Princess. Just love beta males. Hell no. This inclusivity crap is ruining the world. I agree. We got writers rooms now filled with box wine drinking beta males and Hannah Montana pajama babies. Putting pumping out crap. Nothing more. Thank you, Footsie Girl. Graph web for two dollars. They keep disappearing. Graph web for two dollars. I think one day this will pop up. Graph web for two dollars <laughs> for the good Lord's sake. Cancel Disney Plus. Talk about this. They just lost two weeks ago. It was reported 1.3 million more subscribers for Disney Plus. What do you expect? They're putting out Echo. 
queen pin. Who's a queen pin? I mean, come on. What a joke. Footsie Girl for $5. Can't do the woke shit movies. Thank goodness for Lord of the Rings. So happy to be at Alive. And the Megs sucks. <laughs> I agree with you. Couldn't agree with you more. Mexican Iron Man for $10 to do my part for diversity. Me and my cousins hereby need more blue-haired liberal Karens in the landscaping, roofing, and concrete trades. Just saying. Okay. We'll go find them at Home Depot. Falanga1821 for two euros. Hello and Calispera all together. Oh, Yasu Filemon. I hope you're doing great. Thank you, Falanga1821. Curtis D. of Montana, member for a month. Hello, everyone. So, Madam Webb used Chekhov's Pepsi. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. It is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Buck, Crack Media, member for a month. Hail, George, and to all the chat. Glad to be here. I, I can't believe it's been a month. That, that's what astonishes me. It's like, wow, just flown by. So thank you all for being. Wow, it is like we're almost at the anniversary. Okay, there we go. So, Robert, to pick back up what you were saying. Well, I mean, what's weird is if you look at what's happened, it's almost as if we were specifically this whole idea of of DEI has been specifically injected into our culture. Go back to about 2013, 2014. Oh, well, well, I thought we were talking about Cynthia Rothrock. The oh, 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 she was a guest <laughs> on my previous show. Right. Uh, let's get physical media. Sorry. No, I but I but, watch that now. And we're sitting here in the middle of a live stream. No, but, but, but that's the thing. I, I, what I don't understand is, is like we were on a, a progression that was working. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was, it was moving forward in an evolutionary way, the way it should. And, and people, I think people are innately interested in, in being inclusive for the most part. I mean, you know, when you work with people, the easiest way is to come in contact with people. And the more people you come in contact with, the more you realize we have a lot more that uh, unites us than divides us. But we have a, the United States, especially 65% of our population doesn't even have a passport. Right. So not a lot of Americans are, are traveling, but I think you look at the rise of, of manga compared to the American comic industry, because everybody, what social media has done is it's turned everybody into narcissists. And it's all, like you said, me, 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 me. Like I, as a kid growing up, I never wanted to see myself. I knew myself. I wanted to see people I didn't know well, people I might true. meet one day, or I could grow up and be someday. You want to see and experience things that are new and exciting. And I think it's, it's, a absolutely well, you because and, you want to expand your world you don't want to see a mere reflection but no and, but social media has all, all of these people i think look what it's done is it's amplified the awkward teenage years mm -hmm. you know normally we all suffered in silence and maybe we had a circle of friends but now you can take your awkward teenage years online join a community and people will pat you on the back and so you don't ever have to leave those awkward teenage years. You can hold on to that weird, introverted awkwardness, and it's celebrated. And then you can go into your adulthood without having evolved into the adult you should be. Right. So people are now carrying their weird, awkward teenage years into their adulthood and making it their identity, which is bizarre because that's not what's supposed to happen. No, and you're when supposed you to grow up. You're supposed to grow up. But th this is what Alan was talking about in his in the D files. You have uh, where is it? I have it right here. You have uh, you have here. He was talking about in the D files when you're talking about social media and the narcissism. Let me bring it right up. It was interesting the way he say the art changed. Oh, fill that out by the way. I, I am going to fill it out. I, I have filled it out on the other one, but hold on. I want to share it because he, where is it? It's down here. He was talking about. Uh, By the way, Manolo is correct. He says in the chat, no RMB. It didn't just happen because of the tech. It was by design. No, no, no. It was absolutely by design. The tech was the weapon that they was the trigger that needed to be pulled. Now is. everybody's carrying around a device that is, we're easily programmable now. Here mm -hmm. it is. Alan nailed it right here because he was talking about the fact that Disney was hiring these new wave of artists. Basically, that I view them as activists, 
And the problem, and they were bringing them from Tumblr and other spaces, not from like Caltech. He goes, the pro Cal Art. The problem is that Tumblr is not art college and will not give you the proper training required to grow. But he goes on. Tumblr-based artists are constantly being affirmed by fellow Tumblr artists, which breeds an unhealthy level of narcissism and bad habits. So even they're stopping themselves on social media because you're going to have your group of friends and then their friends and then family and other people are going to go, oh, your art's amazing. That doesn't help you grow. Yes, men yeah, don't I help mean, you. Can, you. can you imagine offering some kind of constructive criticism in that environment? And then take it you because you know the person will take it personally. Oh well, yeah. And then, the, then everyone else will then heap on that other person and then shut them up. That's the and nature of social media. Tumblr was not just another social media platform. Tumblr was renowned for being the most extreme place that you could go for all these ideas. It's where a lot of these ideas kind of gestated and grew and got more extreme over time began. It was just in its own internet. And then when Tumblr uh, closed down because they wanted to be safe for work, they spread over the internet. And then you saw it spread to Twitter and everything else. So a lot of this stuff tracked back to Tumblr just as a whole. Well, and also, you know, when I went to my college, the Evergreen State College, before I went to USC, had a student uprising in 2017. When I was there in the 80s, it was the it was the antithesis of what I saw happen in 2017. Did you start it? The, I know you started it. No, no, no. Started it. no, no I was I, I wasn't there. But what what I what I don't understand is, to me, it was always a given that when you go to college, college is supposed to be an intellectually dangerous place. Yeah. It's where you're going to confront ideas and people that think differently than you. And the whole reason that you're paying for the college that you got into is because of the faculty. It's because the facilities, the faculty, what you're going to learn. And to watch students now get in the face of faculty and yell and scream at them at the college they've worked hard to get to is insane to me. Well, uh, Andre, and I haven't seen... Uh you're right. I'm going to carry that to Andre. I haven't seen this level of social engineering ever before in my life. No, it's never been done before in your mm -hmm. life. That's why. We didn't and have the tools uh, to do it. Exactly. That's exactly right. We didn't have the tools to do it. You didn't have the tools to brainwash a population the scale that can be done right now through mass media, through news, through censoring any kind of alternative new viewpoint especially in the last few years has been pretty incredible when you can when you honestly have the media coming out saying don't do your own research just listen to us and this was actually said the mainstream media repeated this don't do your own research about the treatment how, how amazing is that when the mass media when you have in the, when you have like big personalities I'm not getting, gonna say like Mika was one, for instance, who oh. said like, "Listen to us. We are the ones that tell you what's good for you." It wasn't those exact words, but it was something to that end. That is where you are, and you have any kind of like opposing viewpoint censored. That wasn't possible before. It's only possible this day and age. It's only been been possible the last twenty years. That's why it's being done now. Even in entertainment, I remember when I was a kid. Uh, we didn't have all of the same stuff you did. And w when we eventually did get it, it was with some different stuff like that. But when I look at stuff right now, like for instance, my kids, they're watching Disney Channel. They're watching literally the exact same stuff that comes out in America. Like 90% of it is just dubbed to this language, but it's the exact same programming. It's the exact same messaging, same toxic messaging that is being spread. Thank God for Bluey is all I'm saying. <laughs> when you talk about toxic, oh, by the way, Echo Chamberlain is here. Hello, my friend. Great to see you. Uh, talking about toxic, there is, y'all all know Christopher Rufo. Y'all have heard of him. He does a lot of undercover investigative yep. reporting. He discovered this author, and she's been going around, and she's done some consulting. It wouldn't say for which Hollywood studios, but she's trying to push this message. It's like they went from a stage. I always view the late 90s to be where we hit in the United States a perfect, a, a perfect kind of like medium. Everyone pretty much let everyone live and let live. You didn't care what anyone did. You did what you wanted to do. You could disagree. You could have political opinions. But now, I don't know if y'all have caught this. You hear her. Listen to this. 
capture the concept of white supremacy is is um, Michelangelo Sistine Chapel, God creating man. You know, where where God is in a cloud and there's all these angels and he's reaching out and he's touching. I don't know who that is, David or something. <laughs> and God is white. And David's white and the angels are white like that. That is the perfect convergence of white supremacy, patriarchy. I mean, we're talking the Sistine Chapel here. Uh, yeah, but well, but, but, Angelo. but, but here's the thing. She she does have a point. But right. if, she, if she wants to, well, all cultures mm. see their the divine reflected in themselves. But it's not so, white supremacy. My no, is. no, no, no. Well, what's happened is she's taken something, if you look at religious thought throughout human history, mm. depending on where you are in the world, your gods tend to reflect humanity depending on where they're they're from so michelangelo came from a certain culture and there our version of of the judeo-christian god is based on our reflection but if you go to to a hindu culture you go to asian cultures you go to african cultures all div the divine all of our god images reflect who are native american cultures so it's but not when you say that that's not taking into account all the other cultures in the world that see God either in their own images or in the images of the, the creatures that they've created. But and you don't so, get her, I don't mean to interject here, but you, you don't get her in the and No, her. but what she's doing is she's taking something that isn't, she's redefining something that isn't Correct. what she's saying it is. Right, do she's you hear saying, her saying there's Hindu well, supremacy, Japanese well, I mean, supremacy. I think that's the term you want to use is cultural supremacy. Yeah, it's cult. Yeah, and that's and every culture. I mean, that exists and, everywhere. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. It it depends what culture you're from. Like, look, the Japanese. I love Japanese culture, but it's not they like do. they wanted to be inclusive during the Tokugawa shogunate era. No, they, they didn't. They still I mean, don't want to be uh, inclusive. They welcome people as tourists. They don't allow. It's like our friend who's on YouTube, Jinja Ninja. I've loved Japan for years. I'm waiting to go next year. But you can live there. You cannot become a citizen there unless you are. Fun. Well, I mean, and, and no one hates each. No one hates people more than Asian cultures hate each other. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're, we we all look alike, but we all hate each other. <laughs> yeah, you look alike to us. <laughs> my my point is, it's dangerous. <laughs> what this or what this author did. Our <laughs> what what this author did is dangerous, though, because she's not saying what you just said, Robert. She's not saying this is reflective well, of every but, culture. She's weaponizing. A hundred percent. She's being right. incredibly disingenuous because right. she wants to be taken in by a certain group that will embrace her for saying this kind of thing. And right. what's I think mostly insidious is you take like the United States, we have myriad problems that we need to solve in this country. We always have, but in terms of anywhere, in terms of modern human history, if you look at the West, you look at the UK, you look at the United States, you look at France, you look at a lot of the Scandinavian countries. We are the most progressive and freest of any civilization in the history of humankind. And there is a concerted effort. Now, I don't know by who, right. but there has been a concerted effort, especially over the last 15 years, to somehow dis... They can't blow us up. Right. They can't defeat us militarily. So what do you do? You undercut by... You can go in now using social media, social engineering. What do you want? Call it what you want, but you are actually, you can destroy a civilization from within very easily through ideology. And, and, and how do you, you appeal to people's narcissism that has been cultivated on social media? I mean, if you look at it from a military point of view, it's a perfect, it's, it's a perfect, call it a psyop, call it what you want. It's, it's not hard to do. Once you give a culture, um, social media, it's really easy to pull those levers because people love being on it. You've given people this this a, a conduit right to their brains where you can manipulate them very easily. Well, this is the point is is to to trail onto what you're saying. Hollywood, in my point of view, has taken people like that author, has cultivated group like this, and they've brought them in. When you read the D files of films, right? they've brought them into their environment. And these are the people now who are creating our movies. Remember, our movies are our modern day but, campfires where we sit around and listen to a bar. But what they've forgotten is the one of the 90s. It, yeah. it, 
it you, you're talking about the progression through time. Yeah, this right. is just the logical pro conclusion of the, the ideas that you liked in the '90s. What's happened is people jumped off a cliff, and right. the and the ideas had a natural conclusion, which was the bottom of the floor, and we're hitting it. And people are like, no, I just want to go halfway up the and just stop gravity here. It's like, no, the ideas were wrong to begin with. Uh, her whole idea, like the idea of inclusion. Inclusion is a horrible idea. Inclusion is the, the complete destruction of standards. There is a reason why you don't include everybody. Some people are murderers. You don't right. want them anywhere near you. Um, and so here, here. you want people to be treated according to how they deserve to be treated, which is generally how they treat other people. Uh, but because of the idea of inclusion, because of the idea of equality, if everybody is equal, well, now you've removed all standards. Uh, again, uh, good and evil become the same thing because actually the world exists in hierarchy. Some things are better than other things. Some values and cultures are better than other values and cultures. But with her idea, if you take equality and inclusion, now you have no argument why Italy in the 1500s didn't include everyone from around the world. Right, right but it's the right. same one if we care around today. That's why I brought up Raja Mouli. You don't hear anybody saying when you have like the video that we saw earlier from the the Disney people from the from the Raya the Last Dragon and they're talking about we need more faces that look like ours. Do you see that in India where they're going we need more faces that look like ours for every single tribe we need where's the white guy where's the no you don't where's the guy from Norway you don't because they go this is our culture this is our world. We want to see our stories. And we want to go back to America. Nobody in America stops anyone from making a movie. They don't. Or a television series. If you want to make one, like Shogun is coming out. One of my favorite authors. Love James Clavell. But if you want to make only Japanese films, you want to make your own channel for that? Wonderful. If you want to make one for Vikings, that is going to please honor. Great. Well, that, that. The funny thing there is, is like, I don't watch Japanese movies to see a rainbow coalition of people. No, you watch it for I watch, Japan. I, yeah, That's I want to see Japanese culture. You know, if I watch a movie like The World of Konako, which I recommend everybody watch if you want to watch a banger of a movie, you know, I want to see Japanese culture. And, and like Parasite, it's so funny. Parasite wins best, best picture. Yeah, is anybody one. going, uh, you know, Parasite's just not that inclusive. Right. But this and, is right, though. But he's right, though. The language. The language is the first thing that they use to infiltrate culture. They weaponize people's tolerance in order to accept what is substandard. But the real the real thing is what culture is better than ours? Yeah. There's this idea yeah. like, okay, you want to be inclusive of which culture? You have all these people that want to tear down the West. And my question, my first question to them is, okay, what are you going to replace it with? Yeah, you know, my better? own hometown of Seattle during uh, the protests uh, when they, they created the chop or whatever ever it was called on Capitol Hill, you had people that took over the section of the city, basically. Hmm. And I'm like, it was easy for you to do that because there was already electricity. There was already you were in a public park with bathrooms and you had sidewalks and you had all of this infrastructure that was already built by taxpayers, by workers, all the people that lived in Seattle. So you thought you were being all these revolutionary, uh, we're going to fight for the rights. You should have gone out into the forest where there was nothing there and built a new civilization from the very beginning and see how hard it is. Everybody wants to like take our civilization for granted, and yet no one's willing to actually do the work to create something new or better to replace it with. What's dangerous to me here is that, oh, yeah, let's just tear it all down. Let's all be Marxists. Well, that never works because it, people are different. Everybody is different. Everybody has different gifts. We are not all equal. We no, can we're be not. Equal. We can be equal That's under the law and right. equal. But, but every human being, I want to be, I say it all the time, LeBron James. I'd love to be LeBron James, very handsome man, incredible basketball player. I can't, no matter how hard I work in my life, even if I went back and started playing basketball at six months old, I will never, ever, 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 ever be as good as LeBron James. But you, you know, know what? what? This might be a hard lesson for me to learn, but I better learn it. And I better learn it sooner rather than later. But in Hollywood, you could identify as LeBron James. Yeah, and you know what? That's the problem, is that, that people is be like, problem. if you want to be LeBron James, rather than say, you're never going to be LeBron James, why don't you find something that you're good at? Because it's yeah. that's like a bad word to tell people they can't do that's something. Like, to be fair, though, Robert, you're too white. <laughs>
to identify yeah. with LeBron James. You could identify. I'm with too you white to do anything now. But that's a great point one... you made, and that's uh, that's a point that I just want to throw in there. As someone not living in the United States, and I'm sure this body will uh, will agree with this, or uh, I won't presume. But what I see is that the radicals in America they have like this idea that America is somehow backwards and other mm. places are more progressive <laughs> and America needs to be more progressive like other places. Which fucking other places are you referring to? They if haven't there tried. There are no country. more progressive yeah, where places. Are we, where I are you going to go if, if this is the worst country in the world? Exactly. Where do you think it's somehow better and which place should you be more why like? haven't you left yet? I remember Yes, there you yeah. go. Why didn't they fuck? Pardon my language. Why didn't they <laughs> hey, leave? Your channel. I know, but it's like I know. Why didn't they fucking leave? If you don't like, okay, yeah. you know what? My whole life, I was raised. Everybody has the right to their own opinion until it gets to the point where they want to harm others. Yeah. I've grown up with conservatives, Democrats. I have half my friends are liberal. The other half, again, are are right. Guess what? We get along because we go. Okay, we both want. What's the best for our community, for our country? We have different approaches. I think some of them on some of my friends are retarded, but I go, I love you. You're you're on the short bus crowd, but it's okay, no problem. But when you have communists, when you have Marxists, they don't want to better things. They use the stories to program kids, to program a new generation. They want to destroy what exists. They don't want to make it better. I think that's where we're coming from. They want to bring everything down. Whereas historically, you would have people who opposed one another politically, but you know what they agreed on? We both love America. We both love movies. We both love our And together, they would work. This is not who these people are. And this Bruce said it. Why don't they leave? Now, before we move on, I want to uh, read a few Super Chats. And then we're going to pick up with um, a discussion about what's going to be happening now with X-Men 97 and then OpenAI. Steel leg of history for $5. I can't thank you all enough for the support. Had a rough day. I accidentally broke my HDMI cord. So I can't stream for a few days. I'm within 10 subscribers of 300. Congratulations, Steel leg of history. Sorry about your cord. If you need any help, reach out. Frank Hammett, member for one month. Frank's here. Hail, all a great show. Thank you, Frank. Love the name. Frank. Red French Moon for two euros. Robert, did Cynthia Rock, Rock Roundhouse kick you? Oh, man, right, I read right that Right in the heart. Way. Right in the heart. I thought right it first heart. said, Robert, Robert, did Cynthia Rock... Look, <laughs> Robert did Cynthia Rothrock. That's what I first read. See, that's where my mind yeah, is. Yeah, no, she kicked me right there. She was absolutely delightful. Poopa Chalupa for $10, encouraging groups to get into certain industry? No problem. Why do they also have to demonize other groups in the process? Disparity doesn't automatically mean discrimination. Because people, I know the word's overused, bullies, but some people, in order to be justified that they're assholes and feel good about themselves, put other people down. And it's also a way that they gain power. These are bad people. These are good people. We're good people. Under the idea that everyone is equal, then yeah. a disparity does mean that someone's been discriminated against. Because if everybody's equal, every single person in the world is replaceable, which is why they think you can take the highly qualified people in Hollywood that have been doing this for years and making great movies and make, been hugely profitable and just replace them with anybody. Like, to them, someone from Tumblr is the same as them. A hundred percent. I can't imagine exactly that. Equal. Uh, when yeah, I read that, I couldn't well, I believe that. Was animators. Anyone can animate, so we can just grab anyone. Hmm. By the way... <laughs> We all know that's not true, but we're seeing yes. the results of that thinking mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. movies like Madam Web and with movies like The Marvels. And it's not because they're about women characters. Right. They're bad stories. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think any of those uh, Tumblr animators could hold up to Hiro Miyazaki? No. No. Really? We're seriously. I, I mean, mean maybe they right. He, he wouldn't hire them because we're talking about merit-based systems, which Disbrew keeps hinting at. We're not talking about this false equality which divides and shackles people. Then we got Donna Hergenrether for $5. What does the panel think about Nike laying off 1.6 thousand employees? For context, the CEO is the chairman of the board at Disney. Go woke, go broke. I mean, the heartbreaking thing about this is that they're getting laid off because of the bad decisions that the uh, senior executives have made. Yeah. And uh, the executives get to keep their jobs. 
while the frontline people uh, are laid off. And that's that's the crime that's going on here. Next one. We have rebound for two euros. We are staring at the approaching behavioral sink. I like that. Thank you, rebound. Chain slamming for $10. Hey, George and panel, dig what you all do. Next big insurance scam is happening now. Springtime for Disney. P.S. Love you, Robert. You got a fan, Robert. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Echo Chamberlain from New Zealand for five. Jung called it puer aternus, an overriding tendency to remain in an adolescent mind frame well into adult years. This was talking about what you were saying, Robert, how you have people who are perpetually staying teenagers. Yeah, well, in an emotional state. What's interesting about this platform we're talking on right now, if this platform is stunningly amazing, that anybody from any walk of life all around the world can get on a platform and speak their mind. But the people that really succeed on the platform are people that really work hard at it. You know, every kid wants to be an influencer. They have no idea what it takes to become a successful influencer. But this communications technology mm. is allowing people to freely express ideas more so than ever before on a global scale. It's amazing. The question is, what are we going to do with it now? And yeah. if we're just going to yell and scream at each other, what we need, the more foundational knowledge that people have, Mm -hmm. about the world in general or whatever your topic of conversation is if you want to talk about art you should know as much about art as you can know and since it, there's so much out there to learn you'll never stop learning right. but we don't even have people that want to do that anymore no because the they want to go from knowledge. a to z they want to go from a to z you know that they they don't want to again they don't want to work for it, but you hit on a well, that's thing. that is the real problem work that's why i know a lot of a lot of the a lot of my friends in pop culture can't stand that I cover the Megans, Harry and Megan. And and I answered this last week because it was a foot, it was, you know, Super Bowl and I did a Megan live stream. And I'm gonna answer it quickly. I cover the Megans for half of my channel, besides Lord of the Rings and Tolkien and pop culture, because I view them as the prime example of the rot in Hollywood and in society today. They they represent a hypocrisy, right? They represent a level of entitlement and of DEI that is just despicable. So I cover them in order because a lot of people say, look, I love politics, but I don't like to mix my politics with my movies. Unfortunately, Hollywood has done that. So the people who are like, I don't want to hear politics when I'm talking about movies, you have to talk about the politics. Robert said, what are we going to do with all these amazing tools? Well, we need to get the information out there while being somewhat entertaining with a great panel like this, so we can get back what we love. Win a Ranger for $20. We have to stop using their language. Absolutely, amen. It isn't about who they want to see in media. It's about who they don't want to see. Inclusion or diversity are just tools to destroy, not create. The ideology is destruction. I think the answer is simple, though. I, I think we need the government to come in and regulate all this. Which? YouTube? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what are you doing? Are you pulling my uh, leg? Yeah, that was great deadpan delivery. I, I yeah. think you're serious. <laughs> so did I. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Andre's on top of you. He's about to pull you. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like, that which came government? out of <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good one, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I only tr I trust some government with uh, governments with that, not many. <laughs> uh, but the problem is that uh, you only have a government that you, that you trust for so long. Yeah. I, yeah well, I, I think the founding fathers didn't trust any government. And no. I think that's why, that's why freedom was so important to them. Number one. Warm First thing that we take for granted. It yeah. is. But it's like anything else. It's like when, you, how many times have we had, have we had jobs where you go through your life and whether you stay at the same job and you get a raise or you move to a new job and you get a raise uh, where you're like, okay, man, I'm making more money now. Do you say I had less money before and I paid my bills. So maybe I'll take this extra that I'm making and put it aside for savings and grow. No, we're going to go. I can buy more shit. <laughs> you know, I can have more fun. Very few people look at the long-term vision. Well, I mean, there, there was a time not too long ago. I can't remember what it was, but when, when we gave up our freedom for the government to protect our safety, our which was horrible. Safety. You know, yeah. Jefferson said it, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it's, you know, along the lines of if you want safety, you're going to give up one for the other and have me. Can I just say one thing? Uh, yeah. You weren't actually given a choice. 
to give up your safety. Many people think that, oh, we we did this. We did. No, I hate the term we for that reason, because it's mm -hmm. one of the most ex abused words that exists in the English language. Okay. It is a word that is used to, to just wash out blame that we collectively did. No, we didn't. It was what? done to us. It was the same thing in the early 2000s when people think that, oh, we gave up. No, you didn't give up anything. It was taken from you. You never had a vote where you chose to give anything up in security. No, it was done for you, and you had the illusion that this was done with your consent. It never was. Right, it was done against I, your will. Yeah, I mean, I'll respond to that only by saying, you know, we came yeah. out. And I, I don't mean anything personal against. No, 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 no. I, no, no. I, I just yeah. want to. I just want to respond to your point. It, it's, yeah. You know, we came out to support uh, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, but we didn't come out to to uh, to protest uh, the lockdowns and the vaccines. Exactly. And you, we well, saw it in other countries. I mean, Australia was famous for uh, for their protests. Um, for some reason, uh, the righteous in America are staying silent, and, and we're not coming out in droves like the opposition have, have, has been coming out. Yeah. War Machine for 300. Gifted 10 Georgia Giant Slayer memberships. Thank you, War Machine. Please pick them up. Grab them if you have them. Now, y'all know X-Men 97. Y'all have seen what's going on. Right. I, I know you have. Alan's got the smile on his face. I'm waiting for him to say something. Uh, but we're going to find out how Morph is doing in his life as a non-binary. Even though, I have to admit, it's like you think about it. He's non-binary, right? But the moment that he says that he's non-binary, that categorizes everyone into binary or non-binary, creating a binary system, which makes him what? Binary again. Well, it's, it's insane. Well, look, I, 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 behind me, I have probably 30 X-Men omnibuses. Right. I know you love them. That's I, I'm a huge... To me, the X-Men characters are like the comic book version of Star Trek. And what's interesting to me is like Star Trek, the X-Men have always been metaphorically... You could plug any group you want to. I mean, it's no surprise that in X-Men 2, there's a line of dialogue. Can't you just try not being a mutant? <laughs> the whole idea was that the X-Men are a metaphor for any downtrodden outsider group right. and to then define the x-men by then applying modern uh ideology defeats the whole purpose of the x-men in the first place because right. they anybody who felt like they were an outsider then to come along and say okay a character is non-binary but what does that mean i mean you're an x-man you are a mutant you're homo superior and you're shunned by humanity. Why do you have to come out and say this? Because it's it's an extra added layer that, one, dumbs down the X-Men metaphor, the mutant metaphor in the first place. And two, it creates story problems where there shouldn't be story problems that exist because I would ask that character, what does that mean? Right, but you're it telling kills me the story. It kills it. Well, there is no, the story is of the X-Men. It's it's a metaphorical story. By sure. then, now you've specified it. You've right. now come in and said, this particular ideology is now part of what the X-Men are. Like, like, for instance, Storm is Black, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't, you can, of course, have stories like God Loves, Man Kills. But the whole point is that Storm, she's a mutant, that's the point of Storm, is that she's right. a mutant. And not that she's... I mean, you can have civil rights, and the, there's always been... They've always gone in that direction. But to do this is to now specifically identify the X-Men with one particular group, where collectively, they have all groups. They represent all groups. That's what the X-Men are. And now what they've gone and done is now identified them as being at least a part of one particular group where it the x-men which i think is a complete mistake same is true of star trek the same is true of any allegorical storytelling but, but it's, made, it's, yep, that's because on. it's it's a it's a flaw in the very idea in itself like if somebody is going well i just think everybody should be able to say this and not, we don't push any opinion and somebody else is just 
pushing their opinion, they win by default because there's no one pushing back on it. And so all of these stories which are neutral will always lose to somebody who's just willing to go, no, that's me. Because how are you going to fight it? You can go, no, it isn't. But if that group keeps repeating it, if that group gets in charge of it, they just impose their willpower. So you will see this with any the, neutral property. Or I mean, this goes back to the beginning, what I was saying in the intro. We have so many properties today that suck, but they turn around and they don't care if they flop this brew. They just go, we have our message. I mean, you look even at the X-Men. Have you noticed that most, whether it's comics, cartoons, animation series, even in our movies, you can see the colors. They're pushing the trans flag behind it. The colors match the same. My point is, is they've killed the story to push the message. And when you listen, and when you listen to the fact, when you listen to uh, the showrunner, Bo, which it was because I was watching Midnight's Edge and listening to Andre, I caught this video that I wanted to share with everybody. I couldn't believe, well, I could believe, I couldn't accept, I did not want to accept the arrogance of its showrunner. It's so odd when you listen to George Lucas or you used to listen to John Ford, the first thing they talked about, Disbrew, was their world. Andre, you know that they would talk about the story, the characters. Yeah. This guy, he turns around. What is the first thing that he says? No, 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 no. First thing he says is my experience. Here it is. Still getting used to these controls. I made series. And comes back and I'm like, okay, well, I should be professional and try to play this cool. So I was like, yeah, I'd be really interested in thinking about that. Uh, like, yeah, let's, let's, let's think. And then I probably got off the phone, screamed, cried, ran around. Um, and, you know, and then just went, uh, came up with a pitch, pitched it uh, to Kevin Feige and, you know, him and Brad could not have been more just supportive and also just encouraging to make sure that we got it right. I think Here it comes. Parts was like, they were truly interested in like what my experience as a black gay man was and how it was going to inform the story we were telling. And uh, what, what does that have to do with the story? Oh, it means that the story is now inaccessible to anyone other than black gay men. <laughs> I mean, that's it. You nailed it, Andre. Alan? I remember when, uh, so X-Men was my gateway into comic books. Uh, yeah. Bought it at 7-Eleven off the spinner rack and uh, I was hooked. And the thing is, is what I remember the most about the X-Men was uh, Professor X, his whole goal was to take these misfit people and to... Uh, essentially uh you know not only show how great we are to teach us how to harness our powers but to also integrate ourselves within society uh, yes his, his message was one of peace while magneto on the other hand with with the brotherhood was, was malcolm x was to take the banner of homo superior and and to take over the world uh mm -hmm. you know to say that mutants were the best uh mutants are powerful and mutants should be running the world and to see the parallels of that today uh, is mind boggling because nothing's you, you were hoping things have changed, but you realize, no, that we're, we're walking down Magneto's path right now. Yeah, it's the same one. I don't know if y'all ever watch this. There was a series a few years ago that tried to do kind of like their own take on the mutant powers. It was called Alphas. Yeah. And it was Maharasha Ali's. I think Maher. I can't ever pronounce it. Mahershala. Mahershala. Mahershala Ali's like first acting gig. And it, you know, besides a couple of problems, it was a sci-fi channel thing. It didn't have a lot of money, but it was really good. And they had the same thing. They had the two visions of the world. I love the X-Men. Read them since I was a kid. You have the vision of the piece that Alan was describing and the one that we're now headed down. But they're going, they're trying to push the train faster and faster and faster. And we can see it in the films. The thing is, is are they going to continue to pump this? Because we know it takes two to two and a half years from the time a project is greenlit till it comes out. Are we going to be sitting here in 2027 and we're going to see that they change? That they're like, okay, we messed up in the early 2020s and now here's the new fresh batch. Because based on your D files, Alan, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's going to be changing. No. And unfortunately, the, the D files is only a reflection of Disney, but it's also a reflection of the entire industry. Right, and and from what people have been writing to us about, uh, this is almost every industry now. That, yep. uh, that what's happening at Disney is just uh, a because well, they're well, they're the canary in the coal mine. 
They're, they're the tip of the spear, sort of put it. Yeah. Just but ultimately, you think about it's not working. Nope. You see, the, the problem is this new ideology or identity politics. What's the end game? Like, oh, what are you what are you building? Like, are we going to create a a more verdant, just society? It seems to me that that we're creating a whole group of people that are carrying pitchforks and torches, yeah, and and that want to. I haven't seen a lot of people. I I heard that the thing about DEI, and I I can't get away from this is about revenge. I can see that. that you know, at, at the end of the day, we're 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 seeing. Let's come after people. I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many cancel culture didn't exist until. I mean, maybe, but not in the not in the incarnation it exists in Ooh. now. People take joy. Well, they in do destroying because, someone. But who are you talking about? You're talking about Robert, and I think Andre has mentioned this before. You're talking about people who felt powerless in their lives. The people that they're programming, whether whether it's the actors that they put on screen that look like our next door neighbors instead of the legends that we used to lionize and look up to, or the people who are making the decisions. From the bottom rung all the way to the top, the people at one point or another who felt powerless that have gotten power and now are getting revenge. The yeah, I find it interesting that uh, people feel powerless today. When, when I grew <laughs> up in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, you know, there was a time where I felt powerless, uh, and uh, I can't look. I would much rather live today. Would have much rather have lived today than I did back in the yeah. Day. Now we, we the always, we've progressed. And, and now we want to go backwards. Cancel culture yeah. always would have existed. It's just they didn't have the power to. They right. weren't in the positions mm -hmm. at the time. They've always wanted to. Um, and this is, the, I think, what people don't realize is if you want that neutral perspective of everybody can have their opinion and we're not going to decide in their entertainment one way or the other, that itself is a perspective that you have to enforce. And it does mean you can't allow people who have the other ideas to take over. And, and I think that's one of the issues. It is literally... People who desired power and willing to use it have taken over and just kicked everyone else out. It's like if you wanted them not to be able to, you had to keep them out. If you want to, inf if you want neutrality, you do have to enforce it. Yeah, this story of power goes back to the beginning of time. Uh, it's nothing's changed. Yeah, now yeah. taking uh, a position is a position. It is, but that's like the people. Exactly, you hit it right there. It's like the people who go, I, I you know, I don't want to deal with politics. They want to put their head in their sand. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to where we can have conversations about. Who the hell shot first, Han or Greedo, before the special editions ruined it? Or to discuss about the Ewoks, or to talk about the Wheel of Time and how huh, the books, not the not the movie, not the TV series yes. from Amazon. Which I, I remember when that got hired by Amazon, and I was so excited. <laughs> I was excited I, when I watched your videos because I hadn't. Uh, I had just finished reading the first book, and I hadn't turned it on the episode. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this Bruce video first. I, I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. And then they did the same thing to Rings of Power. We want to get back to the days of having fun and disagreeing about, you know, who's stronger. Is it Colossus or could it be, you know, Thor? Yeah, in, the, like yeah, in, the, in the WGA articles we've been running, um, you know, it used to be the stories where you, you told stories to relate to people. Yeah. To kind of connect with your audience and say, hey, what I've gone through, uh, you've gone through, and let's share that that experience in this story. But what we're seeing now is it's a shift to the message that we want to preach to you. To me, that's what wokeness is all about. It's about preaching a message and saying that you're not you're not living up to uh, to our standards. And uh, let me shame you into it, and then let me correct you and tell you how you need to live your life. But how did they appoint themselves as the people that were judge, jury, and executioner? Mm -hmm. The thing That's that a strikes very me important right there, and this is the important thing: the people that right now are benefiting from this, those that, mm -hmm. according to a certain narrative, have been mm -hmm. underrepresented uh, and have been re the recipients of unjust treatment in the past, according to a narrative, I'll mm -hmm. leave for his audience to decide, decide the accuracy yeah. of that. They are not the ones pushing this. This is like the same thing, how like every comic book movie is being made female-centric right now. No woman ever asked for that. No female audience asked for that. It's the exact same thing here. The people mm -hmm. who are basically being set up to take revenge, they didn't ask for it. 
this is a, a great way to sow discord between mm -hmm. people and between groups, keep people fighting between themselves to lose track of the bigger picture. Yes. So this is a very important distinction. So you can say that, yes, DEI is absolutely about taking revenge, but the people unable to take revenge, they didn't ask for it. No, of course not, but they have... Alan again shows in his film Threat Dive, it was more important. He's talking about the women in animation and especially specifically about Ray of the Last Dragon, I believe. It was more important that these women could pad the quotas and become useful foot soldiers for the cause of DEI. Once in, the activists were asked for referrals, and now they were in a position to hire other artists from their friend squads. They were now hiring based seemingly on their politics. These friend squads quickly created a powerful contingent not just at Disney. So you got these squads of people, the radicals, mm -hmm. hiring radicals, hiring radicals, hiring radicals. I mean, that's... Yeah. Well, and, and let, let's let's take it beyond what, what happened. Uh, two things happened to these, to these friend squads that came in. Uh, half of them who couldn't do the job quit, feeling dejected because they couldn't meet. The other half uh, couldn't do the job, and they complained so much that they got promoted to story. Whoa, and that's whoa, whoa. what happened. So it's now they're no worse. They got promoted. I, I mean, yeah. they got promoted. Oh, yeah. They, they complained, so they failed upwards. Yeah. So rather than being involved in animation, the art, uh, they are now behind the scenes running the story. And, and can you imagine the, uh, you know, going behind closed doors at a creative session and having this contingent uh, try to dictate what, what the story is? And that's, that's where we wow. got which. It sounds like a bunch of... <laughs> Look at me, Leech is just wow, unbelievable. That's why I said this dive, that this exploration you've done on the Disney, I, I view it as a, a macro on the entire Hollywood industry. Because again, when you are one of the largest studios, however well or bad that they're doing, they are the tip of the spear and people are going to be following in their shoes. I think that's why so many of them were angry and were attacking movies like Sound of Freedom last year when it did so well as an independent, or you looked at, you know, they didn't like the fact that Tom Cruise did well in Top Gun, and, you know, one after the Godzilla minus one, you can name it, any good film. I watched The Holdovers, I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Alexander Payne, brilliant director, but we're seeing this day by day. I do think that there is hope on the horizon. It is that people's eyes have been opened more and more by these conversations, by having our live stream, by Disperse videos, by Andre's, voice and the message he gets out by robert and how he tries to show both sides of it like we all try to and then alan a i think that's the way but i think ai a lot of people are afraid of it i was when i was yesterday on that panel as i was sharing on salty nerds we were talking about sora have y'all done anything oh, have y'all it is but it now is going to be giving power to people like us Oh, yeah, I didn't mean crazy in a way. I mean the speed of development on that is crazy. Oh, yeah. You go back a year to the Will Smith thing to this, and yeah. it's like, yeah, you can see mistakes, but this was a year, and this is the worst it's ever going to be from this point on now. It's just going to get better. So, um, yes, tools like this are going to be insane. Well, think about it. I'll you, yeah, I'll tell you the problem. Uh, people, uh, the young, the next generation is not being taught how to tell stories properly. Uh, yes, right. Soon, soon AI is going to tell better stories than what what the next generation is going to tell. I that I will have to humbly disagree. I I, I I do not believe that AI, at least in the next ten to twenty years, has the ability to capture humor, sarcasm, that thing that we have in the human spirit. Well, I don't know this, this generation. You think, you think this current generation? <laughs> knows humor and sarcasm. Right, but you do, but you understand it. Andre yeah. gets it, Disbrew gets it, Robert gets it. I yeah, believe I'm not gonna be here forever. That's the thing. Right, but I think tools like Sora, <laughs> tools like Sora are gonna give us the ability when you have text to video that can tell a story that want to entertain people is gonna give us the ability to make a movie that shames Hollywood and gives the people what they want. I, I think that. I mean, because right now, if you want to become a master storyteller, uh, you don't go to college for that. You know, you have to, you actually have to do the research on your own. Go back to the old films and, right. and look at the movies that resonate with you and then ask yourself the question, why does this movie resonate with me? And that's how you become a master storyteller today. 
I think you've okay. also got to go out and live. You've got to have done something. Yeah, and 100%. Something and yeah. There you go. Live Whereas now, if, if you've just been on Tumblr, then it's no wonder that you're writing stories that are just Tumblr, because that's the only breadth of experience you've ever had. Yeah. Um, we all touch grass, you know. It's, yeah, well, you have like to, when yeah. the WGA, sorry, when the WGA was on strike and they were walking around with their signs, which are supposed to be the reasons why you should give me a load of money, the things were horribly written. They weren't very good jokes, and these are risers for a living. And one of them just went, <laughs> "Chat GPT doesn't have childhood trauma." So, no. <laughs> I, I don't want to see all the story about childhood trauma. Is that the only thing you bring? Is that the best thing you could write on your sign? Uh, and. I, I think, yeah, especially with the internet, as there's so many people have been raised on it, that's all they know. And there is no one who's done anything great or been anywhere. It, if 65% of Americans don't have a passport, how many of those are writing in Hollywood that have never even experienced it? A lot. Yeah. And, and I think that that's incredibly problematic. And, you know, the I even think of, uh, as a kid, you know, they call us now free-range kids. Like, when we grew up, You'd go out on a Saturday morning, you'd meet your friends, and your parents would say, come home when the lights come on or whatever. But when you were a kid, we had to learn how to like parlay with one another and figure out, okay, what are we going to do today? What are we going to go? And you learned how to talk to your friends and come to a consensus because you didn't want to sit around and do nothing, even if it's just riding your bike to the local 7-Eleven and hanging out. You were doing something, and you learned interaction because you, you had to stand in front of your friends and talk to them. Now you have people that are constantly, they might never leave you. You've got your friends constantly on a phone, mm -hmm. but, but standing in front of somebody and actually deciding to do something and make a decision and being able to see in someone's face, whether they like your suggestion or not like your suggestion mm -hmm. is, is an art that where that that's where living begins and people aren't even doing that. Living. That's the key. There's nothing else. Yeah, that's, Experience. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where you have Lucas who would turn around and he went to uh, he went to Japan because he wanted to visit the places where you had th you know throne of blood made. You know he understood a Kurosawa. He visited the places. He read the books behind it. He, he the Tao. He went to it. He lived his life. Footsie girl for one ninety nine spot on display area. Boom. Just going to read through some super chats as we start to wind down. Christine Childress for $5. Girls need to be encouraged to work in male-dominated jobs. I worked on repairing photocopiers and fax machines. I love it. Girls need to be in. I think girls need to be encouraged to be who they want to be. I think there's this whole thing of this culture that says we need to put men to start acting like women, and we need women to act like men. I think everybody needs to be themselves men and women are men and women are different each have their strengths each have their weaknesses yeah my my mom went into a male dominated field and mm. she did because that's what she was good at and that's what she there loved. you go no one no. I, I can tell you my grandparents didn't tell her to go into that field right but you you, you, hit, you hit it again loved she loves something do what you love you'll never work a day in your life andrew honeycutt for five dollars george keep up the good work why did they have to minimize rogue's butt cheeks see yeah. Come on. They made Morph a non-binary, so now he can turn into Jean Grey and give Wolverine all the love he's been missing. And then you got Rogue. I mean, come on. Other theory for $5. Too many think that arrogance is strength and force is power. Reason has left the building a long time ago. That's why we're bringing it back. Stubble McShave for 50 I don't know what it is. Is that Swiss? Is that Swiss Franks? No. Yeah, he's in Sweden. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a Swedish Krona. Oh, yes. Swedish Krona. Thank yeah. you, Andre. Stubble McShave for fifty Swedish Krona. AI is now at the stage of the car at the nineteen tens. Development will be faster for AI. In a few decades, there will be a highway system for the AI car. I agree. A lot of people are afraid of it. I am not, and I will say this: in the year two thousand, the vinyl record industry was considered to. They were thinking that that would be its last year. It made thirty-six million dollars today. This year, it is one point six billion. By twenty twenty-six, it's going to be four billion. By twenty thirty, it'll be ten. What I mean is, for every studio, group, organization, network that adopts artificial intelligence, whether it's to make their films or their stories. You're going to have people who want this right here, real human beings. As Robert says, authenticity is the coin of the realm. And the day I actually think that Hollywood is going to be the one to pull back the reins. I want to hear what y'all say about this. 
Andre, do you think that Hollywood will pull back the reins on some of this AI technology when the first person uses something like Sora to make a better film, like to take, um, let's say, the Marvels and turn it into a masterpiece and no. change them? You don't think no. they will? No, I okay. don't think they're going to take it back at all. I think it's now a tool. It is going to be used. I don't think that they were ever going to get to the point where you just say, write me a movie and the AI does that. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, especially when you look at, so like for instance, these Tumblr people that got promoted into story. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, an AI can't do better than, for instance, Alan Ng or anyone here. But you know what? I think an AI can do a better story than some of those people that are working in Disney right now that are pre mm -hmm. promoted way beyond their means. Those people are the worst thing that can possibly happen because they're going to increase adoption of AI. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that uh, AI is going to do like more filler work, like just punch out this sequence right here, do like the spell check and put this in the proper format. I think it's going to be used for shortcuts, and I don't think okay. that Hollywood is going to yeah. to walk back on that. But I do not think that Hollywood is going to to ever have extended sequences be written by AI, although that would be better than having some of these activists do it. Okay, thank you for that. I, I didn't know, I'd like to hear that thought about it. Gives me another perspective. We got Nini for 15. She sends a super sticker of a puppy. Thank you, Nini. Well, we've had a great chat. I really appreciate all of you coming. Now that we're wrapping up, before we get going, we want to tell everybody, we'll go around the panel, where they can find you, what you're doing next, and what you're going to be doing. This brew, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, so I've got the Madam Web videos up, which was the most recent thing. Um, I think the biggest disaster about Madam Web, it's not on streaming, so I can't do the video that I want to. Because <laughs> I genuinely think that show is so bad, you have to see it to believe that what everyone is telling you about it. Um, so be interesting when that gets actually released to a place where you can show the clips. Uh, also tonight... In, I think it's four hours, I'll be on Lethal Lightning stream talking about Sweet. Halo. Oh, wonderful. How has that been, by the way, Halo? I haven't. It's, better or worse than the first season? I think it's doubled down on exactly the same issues as before. It's just boring, which is boring. why I've not even reviewed this episode. Nothing happens. It's a load of people in corridors just talking about how nobody trusts them and how something is going to happen in the future. But I don't care because we're three hours in and nothing's happened now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, this brew. Andre? Uh, yeah, you can find me over at Midnight Sedge. We dropped one video on uh, on Madam Web earlier today, uh, going through some box office numbers, and we will be dropping another one in, I don't know exactly when, but relatively soon here, certainly in the next couple of hours, because this movie is flopping so bad that it may even change Hollywood. And... Uh, cause them to walk a little bit away from uh, female-centric all the time. Let's hope so. Robert, thank you, you can, for coming. Uh, you can find me on uh, my channel, The Burnett Work, and, um, you know, always doing my Rob Observation shows. I'm going to do one tonight on on the state of Paramount, this, this studio, where it's at in terms of the stock price and where it's going to be. Um and then I'm working on an audio drama that I'm going to be crowdfunding that stars Todd Stashwick from Picard Season 3. We are adapting uh, Road to Perdition author Max Allen Collins. He has written a 19-novel series about a detective named Nathan Heller who began as a, an, an on-the-take, a corrupt police officer in the early 30s Chicago, and he later became... Private Eye to the Stars, and there's 19 novels that we're adapting. We're starting with the first one, obviously, and Todd Stashwick is playing it. We're going to have a lot of actors that you will recognize playing oh, parts, wow. but it's not like a book on tape. It's a full-blown Dolby Surround, Dolby Atmos audio drama. Uh, think like The Sandman on Audible. But we're oh, doing that. I can't nice. wait. I can't wait. That so, is and sweet. You'll hear the proof of concept that I've already finished, that I, I directed and produced, and... Um, then we're going to launch a crowdfunding campaign because our budget does not, it did not include getting better and better actors. The more money we can make at the crowdfund, the better actors we can, we can hire obviously because it's full SAG, it's WGA. And well, anything we can help you, just, just let me know if we can help you. We can we'll promote it here. Whatever. Yeah. Say. It's called true noir. True Nathan noir. Heller case books. Is it going to be true a little noir, bit like, like it. yeah, it, it is. It sounds exciting. Is it a little bit like spade? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, but you know, it's it it all of the the Nathan Heller books deal with real historical events. Okay. And the first one in the early 30s, the mayor of Chicago during around the time of the World's Fair, the 1933 World's Fair, was actually assassinated. And so the first story deals with that assassination, and he was wrongly assassinated. He was not the assassin's target. Yeah. And so it deals with Frank Nitti and Al Capone and that whole Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It's all, it's very interesting. Beautiful. Thank you for coming, Robert, again. Always a pleasure. Alan? Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, you can find me on Film Threat. All my reviews are there, uh, along with uh, the rest of our staff. Uh, Chris Gore and I, we do a live stream. Uh, this week, we will be doing live streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This uh, Monday at 3 p.m., we're doing a sh new show called Versus. It's okay. just kind of like a multi-head. And I'm going to be on. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, wow. Robert Meyer Burnett will be joining us. and I'm I don't so quite know what it is. It. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I have no clue either. Uh, I'll give you my hot take on Madam Web. I think Madam Web will be profitable. And the reason I say that is because really? I'm curious how much Pepsi paid to be <laughs> in the movie. And I'm wondering if PepsiCo had uh, had funded most of the production. So it's, it's possible <laughs> that it could be a profitable movie. I wonder if you they really? it now. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's like new Coke. Jesus. Well, that's the thing, right? Because, yeah, you're tied to a bad movie, but on the other hand, the amount of free press they have earned from everyone saying their name because it was that prominent in the bad movie. So their name's gone viral either way. Yeah. I'm not sure whether I mean, yeah, do, does that that that, Could you foreseeably think that, that maybe they paid $50 million to, to be in the movie? I have no idea about those. I don't of, think they would pay for that. I, I don't know how much the product price was. I'm going to look it up, though, for next time. But I just I think a lot of that's changed. Do you really still believe that they you know no, all publicity is good publicity? I think in, in today's um, internet world that some of it has changed. There's two types of branding. Uh, right. There's like where you're deliberately trying to sell someone a product, and the other one is just branding, which right. is just I want my name out there. And so I I do think for especially for actors and stuff. All publicity is good publicity is bad because if your name gets dragged through the mud that's definitely bad and you won't get hired but when it comes to like pepsi everyone already knows what it is you know whether you like it or not right so just having that name in your head is yeah. and no one's they gonna blame pepsi for, for a bad movie no of course not yeah. they're gonna blame everyone else well thank you all guys for coming this brew it was a pleasure to have you here for the first time hope you come back andre always, always. always alan and robert so this Wednesday, I'm going to be holding my very first membership live stream. So I can't wait to see you all there. Going to be releasing another new video. And tomorrow, I will be with Adam Krigler on Bay Staff Monday. Until then, remember, to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to do is remember oh, my, my mouth. Jesus, I'm dry now. All you have to do is remember that we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Always forward. See you next week. And we're waiting for the <laughs> outro. This is the third time. I love that circle. Ah.